the Metrodome, downtown Minneapolis. Central Division clash today between the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Minnesota Vikings. Playoff implications involved in this one, with the loser more than likely out in the run for the NFC playoffs. And a pleasant good afternoon, everybody. Alongside Ron Pitts, I'm Tom Brenneman. Ronnie, we saw the Buccaneers last week. They got smoked by Green Bay, largely due to the fact they couldn't run the ball. Yeah, they got hammered on the run early, but I think they got to go back to that today. Eric Rett, he's close to 1,000 yards. He's proven to this team that he can be effective on the ground. The big key for today, if the run gets shut down, Will Sam Weiss put the game back in the hands of Trent Dilfer like he did last week? In Green Bay, Trent Dilfer had a pretty good day. Over 300 yards passing, no interceptions, and really had two touchdown passes that were dropped. Big game for him, playoff implications. He's got to prove he can step up and handle it. Well, for Minnesota, Robert Smith is out. They've missed him the last number of weeks, so the running game pretty much null and void. Yeah, once again, it's back on the shoulders of Warren Moon. But Warren, at his age, has still got a pretty good arm, and he's got the weapons. First guy, I think about Chris Carter, all the receptions he has. He'll lead the NFL this year most likely. But the real guy that's stepping up, I think, is Jake Reed. Jake Reed is the big play man. He sparks the offense, and I think that's been the big difference in the last few weeks. All right, we'll see how it goes from the Metrodome in Minneapolis. The Buccaneers and the Vikings up next. You're watching the NFL on Fox. Back at the Hubert H. Humphrey Dome in Minneapolis, Sam Weish leads the Buccaneers, 50-year-old native of Atlanta, trying to get his team over the 500 mark. The same holds true for Dennis Green. His fourth year in Minnesota, 36 wins, 24 losses, has taken the Vikings to the playoff in each of his first three seasons. Minnesota has won the toss, elected to receive. The always dangerous Kadri Ismael waits alongside Ampli for the Michael Husted kick. And Husted spins it away. We're underway in Minneapolis. This one sails six yards into the end zone, and Ismael will take a knee, so Minnesota puts it in play beginning at the 20. Led by 39-year-old Los Angeles native Warren Moon. He comes in number one in completion, second in yards, number three in the NFL with a 24 touchdowns. Up front, Stussy McDaniel, Christy Jarek, and the rookie Corey Stringer out of Ohio State. Robert Smith out again today with the ankle injury, so Amp Lee gets a nod in the backfield. Reed Carter, Ismael, the wideouts, Adrian Cooper, the Minnesota tight end. First and ten Vikings on the opening possession of the game. Run, run. And they'll hand it off to Amp Lee. Not much room, maybe picked up a yard. It'll bring up second and long. Tampa Bay, a very solid defensive unit, only giving up 18 points per outing. Curry and Ahana, two on the ends. Dotson and Wheeler in the middle. Linebacking group of Brooks, Nickerson, and Lonnie Martz. And the secondary of Dimry, who came down with a flu last night. 50-50, they say. Martin Mayhew, the other corner. Gant and Everett are the safeties. Scotty Graham has checked into the Minnesota backfield. Moon, his first throw, wide open receiver across the middle is Carter. His 90th reception of the year, it's good enough for a first down out to the 38. Kenneth Gant made the tackle. Yeah, they'll see the pass today, but some of the things these teams got to do, Vikings got to stop the run early. Even though they're weak in pass defense, they got to make a quarterback that only has 15 NFL starts beat him throwing. Biggest area punt return for the special teams. They're second in the NFL. Watch David Palmer. Hit Moon early. Get hits on him. Don't let him get in that throwing rhythm like we just saw there. And also control the clock for Tampa Bay. Keep Moon. Keep Carter on the bench. And please joined by Charles Evans in the backfield. And Moon across the middle. And in and out of the hands of Jake Reed. And he took a lick from Martin Mayhew. Yeah, and that's Jake Reed. We know about Chris Carter, the receptions, but the guy that's been the big play man right here, Jake Reed, he's just going to come down on an in route, but you see they're in quarters. You see 22 Thomas Everett right there, and Martin Mayhew does a good job of squeezing down. That's going to be a hard fit, but that's the big play guy right there. Look at Chris Carter as more the possession man, but when they want to get a spark and, and, and spark things up, they're going to try to go to Jake Reed. Out of 10 from the 37. Three. To give us to Scotty Graham. He breaks a couple of tackles. Is close to midfield and close to another Tampa Bay first down. Or rather, Minnesota first down 
Gant on the stop for the Bucks. And that's been a big question mark coming into this game. We talked to Warren yesterday, and he said, if we can run the ball 20 times, that'll give me enough leeway as far as the pass goes to give us that balance. But that's the problem right there. And this guy, he's a big hit, Robert Smith. So they're not sure if they can run that football today. Smith was off to a remarkable start. In fact, he was on pace to break the Minnesota team rushing record held by Terry Allen with 1,200 yards in 92. Third and one. Close to a first down is Charles Evans, but he got hit and hit hard. The ball came loose in Tampa Bay. Says it's recovered. Derek Brooks came away with the football. I want you to watch this side of the line of scrimmage. What you're going to see is a lot of white shirts getting around the football. Right there, Hardy Nickerson steps up and stuffs the hole. You talk about what a middle linebacker has to do. Well, he stuffed it, but they got the first down anyway. But that's the kind of aggression they're going to have to play with. They don't think that Minnesota can run it against them. They're going to dare them to have to beat them throwing the football. John Sherrick out as the Minnesota right guard. David Dixon has replaced him. And Boone to throw. And it's too high for Jake Reed. Good coverage by Charles Dimery. The front four of Tampa Bay, they have got to find a way to get pressure on Moon. And I'm not just talking about the normal up the field around the corners, making him step up in the pocket. You're going to see some blitzing here. They have got to throw the rhythm off. Remember, Warren Moon coming from Canada, coming from Houston, and that run and shoot, it's all rhythm and timing. That's where he works best. you got to get to him and hit him early. Second and ten, opening drive for the Vikings. Here comes the blitz. And Moon, a quick strike to Carter. And he's shy of the first down. Tackled by Mayhew. It'll bring up third and close to three. They brought the safeties that time. Kenneth Gant, 29. He came down on the backside. A good checkoff. They went to what's called the hot read. As we look at Carter's numbers there. And I tell you, this guy... <laughs> I can't help but think back to 89 and our buddy Ryan could ever let him go. Boy, I mean, what a what a talent he's been here. What a job he's done for this team. They got rid of one Carter and another Carter stepped up. Mm -hmm. That other Carter was pretty good too. Oh, no. Anthony yeah, Carter. I know no first-hand experience on that one. Third down and two. Boom. Good protection. Dumps it off to Anthony out of the backfield and east of the Tampa Bay 35. Good enough for another. Minnesota first down. Tampa Bay doesn't figure on Ampley doing much running. If they're going to run the ball, it'll be 31 Graham as Graham comes in right now and Ampley goes out. So what you'll see from Ampley is a lot of stuff out in the flat. There he is right up there at the top. And they're just working on the zone. Can't give him just a little bit too much room there. But of course, when you got guys like Carter and Jake Reed behind you, you got to give up that underneath stuff. They just do get it off. Blitz coming again. Moon in trouble. Is able to come to the outside to Andrew Jordan, and the tight end picks up close to three. Kenneth Gann again coming on the blitz, applying the pressure. Well, you said it, Ron Fitz. We'll see a lot of blitzing by this Tampa Bay defense. Yeah, we've seen the safeties already. We've seen the linebackers. And it's throw, throw, throw. And no wonder Warren Moon's shoulder has been sore at times this year with the amount of throwing he has to do and has done. And will do more with the injuries in the running back. Tenth play of the drive on a second and six. Ampley nowhere to run. That head on by Mark Wheeler, Warren Sapp, and as always, Hardy Nickerson. Nickerson, of course, last week ejected in the Green Bay game in the fourth quarter, received a $6,000 fine. Yeah. And the reason being, a second offense, he had the altercation early in the year, ripping the helmet off Rashawn Salam of the Bears. And he expected that today the Vikings would take some shots at him to try to frustrate him, which is what most teams will do if they come up against a player that has been thrown out a game earlier or a couple games before. He said, Christy, the center, 62, is the one I got to watch. Last game, he was doing all kind of cheap stuff. Loss of two, a third and eight. Ball to the Tampa Bay, 34. Good protection, Moon fires. In and out of the hands of
of Chris Carter. Maybe a little too high for the ninth year pro out of Ohio State to haul it in. So Quad Reves will now come out, and Reves has been as sure footed a kicker as there is in the NFL the last couple of seasons. In fact, last year a Pro Bowl appearance. You know, they, they brought the pressure, but the guy that made that play was 45 Tony Starr to the corner. He got underneath the route, he got in the passing lane. And that caused Warren Moon to have to put a little bit too much air under that ball and has resulted in completion. Mike Saxon will spot it at the 41. A 51-yard field goal try, not even close. Wide left, it had the distance. So Minnesota cheers up better than five minutes on its opening drive and comes away empty. So with 9.20 left to go in the first quarter, when we return, the Buccaneers get the football. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by Mitsubishi, the new thinking in automobiles. By Apple, makers of Macintosh Personal Computer. If you own the world's easiest computer, what would you do with it? By Miller Lite. When you've got the great taste of an ice-cold Miller Lite, life is good. And by Sega Saturn, redefining what is real and what is a little too real. Cathedral of St. Paul in the nearby Twin City. Pete Pearson starting in place of Scott Dill. The Buccaneers get the football for the first time starting at their own 40 and Dilfer puts it up top and he overthrows the intended receiver Alvin Harper. Very good coverage on the play by Robert Griffin. Brent Dilfer, a native of Aptos, California. 23 years old, the sixth pick in last year's draft. Up front for Tampa Bay. It'll be Groover, Pine, Mayberry, Beckles, and Pearson. Second down and ten. They swing it out to Red, who dropped it. Told you Trent Dilford. Some changes along the offensive line. Gruber did not practice all week with a bad right shoulder. Pine, Mayberry, and Beckles in the middle, and Pearson replaces the right tackle, Scott Dill. Rhett and Moore in the backfield. Alvin Harper joined by Horace Copeland at the wideouts. Jackie Harris having a remarkable season is the Buccaneer tight end. Jackie was the go-to guy last week, a career-high 10 catches. Harper was open, but the ball thrown behind him. Tua Olo delivered the big hit. Tua Olo, the man who's basically taken the place of Henry Thomas, who's gone to Detroit. He is that nose tackle. He's the guy that caused all the problems working hand-in-hand -hand with John Randall down in there as a nose tackle and under tackle. Reggie Roby had a rough week in the loss to Green Bay at Lambeau Field last Sunday. And perhaps... The most dangerous punt return man in the NFL, David Palmer, stands back at his own 20. Palmer, a 74-yard touchdown on a punt return last week, had a 54-yard run back for a touchdown, fall back on a penalty. And speaking of the penalty, a flag littered the field. They may have Wardell Bruce. Right snap, false start, offense, number 52. Five-yard penalty, still fourth down. Yeah, he leaned back just a little bit early, and that'll happen to you when you're on that edge. You got those guys coming around the corner trying to block that punt. Get just a little bit antsy and, and, and step back. So they back him up five. time looked like Demetrius DeBose's move. And both sides pointing at the other. And it's going to be again, it appears, on the Buccaneers. Our referee today, Gary Lane. A little surprised at Tampa Bay. Three straight throws to start on offense today. <laughs> yeah, well, we talked about the run. And I think that maybe Sam is a little gun shy after last week of trying to run it. Neutral zone infraction. The defender Jumped into the neutral zone, causing the false start. Five-yard penalty, repeat, fourth down. That's part of the new rule that came into effect two years ago. Watch right here on this side of the line of, line of scrimmage. If the defender jumps into that neutral zone and causes an offensive player right across from you to move, 
then that penalty is on the defense. Before, they used to warn the defense for jumping in the neutral zone and penalize the offense. It's not like that anymore. Well, now we have another penalty. Apparently not. They're just <laughs> getting everybody reloaded, trying to figure out where they're going. Roby gets it away cleanly, line drive, and he puts a foot into it. Palmer back at his own 11, loses the ball. And it's into the end zone, picked up by Mincy, who brings it out to the one, but a penalty flag is down on the field. It's, it's going to be a clip, or the receiver, Palmer, was not given the opportunity to catch the ball. And that was Charles Mincy, 21, who raced around, got the ball, and tried to bring it out of the end zone. And I was surprised that Palmer even took a chance on that because when you've got a guy coming down blocking for you and they're that close most times punt returners will not even risk it they'll let that ball go especially since it was toward the line of script or uh, toward the sideline and you see that's what they're debating is the whether or not he was given time to catch the ball or was the defender blocked into him there is no foul on the play the man was blocked into the maker of the catch first down yeah, now see, he was blocked into right here. That's Gant running down. Now, Charles Mincy, 21, right there. That push. Now, if Gant runs into him on his own power, then it's a penalty. But that, in that case, it doesn't happen because he was pushed into it. This is a good call by the officials. Watch number 21 for Minnesota, Charles Mincy. He's going to push Kenneth Gant right there. So he pushes him into David Palmer. That is now a live ball. And while Mincy makes the mistake of, uh, of pushing the man in the back, he does a good job of getting that ball out of the end zone. But Minnesota starts its second possession from its own one. Flags down the field, then throws it to the far side. Carter slips in between a couple of tacklers and brings it out to the nine. But again, a penalty flag on the field. It looked like offsides, perhaps on Tampa Bay. Well, Curry, defensive lineman, 75, he moved to Warren. You can see he's trying to find out what do you want us to do here, looking toward the sideline. Offside, defense, number 75. The penalty is accepted, five yards, still first down. Well, first and five for Minnesota. Right here, 75, that's Eric Curry. I don't know if he's looking at that ball. I think he's listening all the way to Warren Moon, and that's an experienced quarterback. Warren knows he's got his team backed up. Why not give the quick count knowing that the defensive line is going to try to get a good jump on the ball? Scotty Graham, the lone setback, gets the ball. And he's hit by Gant out to the nine. Right now, let's send it back to Hollywood for a McDonald's game break and James Brown. Tom, Bill Parcells tried to strengthen his secondary by cutting Maurice Hurst recently, replacing him with Ty Law. Doesn't work here. Quinn Early hauling in his eighth touchdown reception of the season. Saints lead it early. 7-0. Let's take it back to Tom and Ron. And you see the NFC West. All four teams, Atlanta, St. Louis, New Orleans, and Carolina. A chance at the playoffs. Second and one here. This, in a lot of cases, is a waste down. They'll take shots deep, knowing that they got two more downs to get one yard. Carter in motion. They'll stay on the ground for the time being. And Graham picks up the first down as he carries out to the 13 before Derek Brooks, a rookie out of Florida State, made the tackle. When Scotty Graham is in the game, it is run almost 100% of the time. And... That's the thing that they've got to improve on here today is that they've got to find a way to run the football. And one thing Warren said that they can't get into was just all throw. They got into that in the Detroit game, and he said it, it's just not good for us. We need more of a mix. And he said it helps me physically when we get more of a run, run pass mix. First down throw for Warren Boone, and the catch is made by Andrew Jordan. And he stepped out of bounds at the 17. again by Gant. But this Minnesota offense put everything together.
scoring 30 or more points in three straight games for the first time since 1980. The defense of late has been the problem. Well, and, you, and it starts with free agency. You lose a Henry Thomas inside, and uh, you know last year Dwayne Washington is a rookie. He stepped up and played great, but now he's got some rookies back there with him. Three total, two total starting in the secondary. And the youth has really been the problem for him. Second and seven. Moon steps up, throws to Jake Reed, who made the reception despite a real shot from Thomas Everett, the free safety. And I don't know what the scuffling's about. I think Jake is kind of upset at the fact that Everett caught him coming across on that dig route. It's coming right at you. Reed's going to be coming across the screen from your right. But watch number 22, Thomas Everett. Boy, he got him all shoulder. Interesting story about, look at Thomas right there. Interesting story about Jake Reed with the eye complications and having to go through the exercises because he couldn't see out of his right eye. And that's funny, on that route, that was the ball he would have had to catch using the right eye first, getting vision, initial vision on the ball, then making the catch. First down, give us to Ampley. A big hole, crossing midfield. Breaks a tackle and he will score. No penalty flags on the play. Sixty-six yard touchdown carry by Ampli. His second rushing touchdown of the year. I want you to watch the man-to-man -man blocking up front. And just a good job of picking the hole. 62 Christie got the key block as well as Jake Reed right there or Kenneth Gant. And you know, I wonder after that big hit Thomas Everett had, and they started to scuffle of everything, and I don't know if he had his mind on the next play, because that was a touchdown saving tackle he could have made right there. Van Lee, the former 49er, came over as a free agent last season. Reves tacked on the extra point. So the 66-yard touchdown run by Lee, 5.46 to go in the opening quarter, and Minnesota leads 7-0. I want you to watch the man-to-man -man blocking right here by 77 and the center, 62, that's Christie. 77 will be 340-pound Corey Stringer. And you know, if you're going to run the ball, look at that. If you're going to run the ball, sooner or later, you've got to find a way to get the people man-to-man. -man. Watch 86, Jake Reed. On Gant, that's the key block. That, in fact, was the block that springs them down for the touchdown. So that's a secondary block. And the 66 yards, the longest run by a Viking this season. Jerry Ellison from the 10 takes the kickoff from Ravaze, and what a shot delivered by Chris Walsh. Third year pro out of Stanford. Tampa Bay trails 7-0. Tom Brenneman, Ron Pitts, our entire Fox crew back at the Metrodome in Minneapolis. Sam Lee, a 66-yard touchdown run, has given the Vikings a 7-0 lead. Brent Dilfer and the Buccaneer offense held the ball just 44 seconds. Their opening and only possession thus far was three and out. And the Buccaneers have not gained a yard of offense. They'll go to the ground for the first time. And Eric Rett. Brings it out to the 22, to Aloha and Brady converge on the tackle. Defensively for the Vikings, a rookie Alexander and Barker on the ends. The all-pro Randall and Tuolo in the middle. Linebacking group, Jeff Brady replaces the injured Jack Del Rio. He had knee surgery, tried to return last week. Can't go anymore. And then Washington and Fuller, the rookie on the corners. Thomas, another rookie, and the veteran Harlan Barnett are the safety. Second and ten, Brett, big hole. First down out to the 32. Now they finally got it punched through there and they did it on the cutback play. And the key guy they had to get out of there was John Randall, number 93. This play right here, now I want you to watch 93 John Randall. They're going to bring this play back across his face, right there. Great block by Pine. They got him out of that middle and that's the key to running that football. A great shot right there. First and 10, Tampa Bay, their own 32. Dilfer, and it batted down right back to him by Broderick Thomas. Thomas, of course, 
The first round pick back in 1989 by the Buccaneers. Sixth pick overall in that draft. Third defensive player that year behind Derek Thomas and Deion Sanders. That's part of the pressure. 51 Thomas. They're going to make Trent Dilfer have to look at a lot of different looks in the secondary. Listen, confuse him. Make a quarterback who's only had 15 starts beat you throwing the football. It's the way it was last week in Green Bay. The Vikings are saying, hey, you are not going to be able to run the ball on us. Make Trent Dilfer beat us fast. Two tight ends in the game. And Rhett, another big hole, carries out to the 37. Right now for a McDonald's game break, let's send it back to Hollywood and James Brown. Tom, Terry Bradshaw talked about the weak pass rush of Miami, giving Jeff George all kinds of time. Bertie Manuel improvises, hauls it in for the touchdown, and it's a 7-3 lead by Atlanta. Back to Tom and Ron. Uh, see, once again, Rhett with the cutback play. That's what you do against a guy like John Randall inside who's so quick off the ball. A lot of times, he takes himself out of the play. You see they're flipping him around trying to confuse the running game. Dilbert wants timeout on what will be a third and five. And Trent Dilfer, it's been a very up and down season for the former Fresno State star in his second year. The first round pick, sixth selection overall last season, but spent the majority of the year backing up Craig Erickson. With that in mind, spent a great deal of time over the winter and then the summer months with Sam Weish and quarterbacks coach Turk Schonert. And they think perhaps last weekend, a breakout game for Trent Dilfer. Saturday, a Fox NFL special as the Arizona Cardinals battle the San Diego Chargers. Join Terry Bradshaw and Jimmy Johnson as they head to the announcer's booth to bring you the exciting NFL action. Coverage begins at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific. Check the local listings. That ought to be interesting. Johnson and Bradshaw. <laughs> Very interesting. This is going to be a very interesting game for that man, Sam Weiss. Wasn't really caught up in the fact that Trent had a great game last week. Uh, he said, I, I'm not getting too caught up in that. I think this is a big game to see how tough he is to check his poise out. Third and five. Dilfer in trouble. And down he goes to the 29. John Randall. Nine and a half sacks on the season. Yep. The guy that makes that play, though, is Ezra Tuaola, 98. See the way he's cocked in there? What that does, it makes it hard to double team. And look at that rip move. Look at his right arm. Tony Mayberry can't get a good fit. And by the time he scrambles away from him, now comes John Randall. Reggie Roby at a 61-yard punt the first time. This one considerably shorter than that. Out of bounds, the ball will be spotted at the 37-yard line. Well, for Romeo, who had his woes last week, a 33-yard punt here. Well, we talked about these teams trying to sneak into the NFC playoffs. Of course, the Central a year ago, four of the five teams for the first time in NFL history went on to postseason. And that's a big key in this game because the team that didn't go right here you know, when you come into this game, you talk about experience, having been in the big one, and know when to step it up. Well, the Vikings know when they got to turn the heat up. First down give to Scotty Graham. Huge hole, crossing midfield all the way down to the 38, and a penalty flag comes in late. Everett and Demery on the tackle. This could be a face mask. Scotty Graham, once again, the same play that Amp Lee scored on the cutback play. Now they're down discussing what the penalty is. But Tampa Bay has got to be completely confused. They come into this game thinking it's going to be throw, throw, throw. But you know what? If you're Dennis Green, forget the throw. If I'm running the football, I'm going to keep running the football. Gary Lane, again, our referee today. Face mask, five yards on the defense, first down. Most of the time, whenever a good run play happens, it's because they move the nose guard. That's Brad Culpepper right there, and they get him blocked. And that creates a seam. But now that's unusual to see Hardy Nickerson miss a tackle. And another missed tackle by Dimmer. That's the big key, missed tackle. And there's the penalty right there. That's Dimmer. 
Coming now for the for the face mask. First down, carry and three. Nickerson does make the tackle this side to the 28. Well, in all fairness to Charles Demery, got called for that face mask penalty last play. He's had the flu all week, and we tried to talk to him last night. He couldn't even come down. He was up in the trainer's room getting an IV. He's really, uh, he's really hurt and talking to Johnny Lynn, the secondary coach. We joked about it because when he's healthy, Charles Demery's 176 pounds, so he's probably down to about 150, 155 right now. He can't afford to lose much more in play. Moon rolls left, close, and it's a touchdown. Chris Carter. No wonder Chris Carter leads the NFC reception to 89. The blitz is going to come off this side. Warren's going to roll out. But the thing he has is time. They do a decent job of blocking the backside to give him that time, and he just goes to the corner. Martin Mayhew struggling to keep up, works away from the safety, and another great throw by Warren Moon. And once again, Chris Carter putting a hurt on team. Reveille adds the extra point. So a 2-16 to play here in the opening quarter at the Metrodome in Minneapolis. Warren Moon and the Vikings. Laying it on Tampa Bay, 14-0. Here's another look at the touchdown. Right here, if you're Everett, Thomas Everett, you know you got to get on that horse and try to make the play. And that's just a great throw. Throwing that ball the one place it has to be, away from the defenders, but yet not so far outside that Chris can't hold the ball, get his feet down, and get the touchdown. Well, Warren Moon, uh, now number four on the all-time pass completion list. How about the company of that group? Marino, Tarkington, the former Viking, Joe Montana just stepping aside from football, and Moon goes by Dan Faust. It's been an amazing run for Warren Moon. Coming out of Washington, no one in the NFL gave him a chance. They said he couldn't throw the ball well enough. He went to the Canadian Football League for six years, won six straight championships, piling up over 21,000 passing yards. Came to Houston, shattered every record there, and his first season last year with Minnesota, his eighth straight Pro Bowl. How do you say a guy that throws for that many yards can't do, can't do it, can't throw in this league, can't be a quarterback? I, that amazes me. And you look at, at his age, you look at the zip he puts on that ball. I mean, he throws a tight spiral. He puts it on the line. Short kick, Bobby Joe Edmonds. Crosses a 25 and tackled at the 28 by Chris Walsh. Tampa Bay trailing 14 nothing. Still two minutes and eight seconds left in the first quarter. Well, Trent Dilfer said to us last night the one thing that he felt he's improved in the most of being able to look off a safety whenever he threw the football as opposed to just staring a hole in where he's going to throw and that's been the big improvement for him he said Blake clock down to three they get it off Ed McDaniel coming up to make the stop on Eric Rett. Well, the music event of the year is coming to Fox. Catch the superstars of pop, rock, country, and R&B performing the year's biggest hits. It all happens on the 95 Billboard Music Awards. Live this Wednesday, 8 Eastern, 7 Central only on Fox. No game for Eric Rett. Second and 10, Tampa Bay. Down again, second time today, first sack today for Ed McDaniel. We talked about Scott Dill, the right tackle. He injured his foot last week against Green Bay and replaced by Pete Pearson. Yeah, we talked about that, but it starts too with these guys in here. Watch McDaniel, 58. Nobody blocks him. Look at that hole. They're so worried about Randall and Tuaolo inside. 
that Ed McDaniel has a free run, a free shot. I mean, that's the quickest way I know to get your quarterback killed. And you talked about Pearson being over there on that right side. Had a tight end over there. Somebody blew the protection to let the linebacker come scot free. Third and 17. Dilfer, good protection. This time has a man good enough for a first down. Horace Copeland out to the 45. Wow. Horace Copeland drags all the way across the field. And watch how close Trent Dilfer is to getting sacked on this play. You can see the double team right over here on Randall. But look at that, the little hold there on Roy Barker by Pearson. But Copeland, high seat, going up and getting the ball. Watch this. This is what Trent Dilfer feels. Boy, Pete Pearson did a pretty good job of calf wrestling that guy on that play. <laughs> if they don't call it, it's all fair. Dana 24, Dilfer rolls right, open receiver across the middle, Ty J. Armstrong, and he's banged out of bounds at the 25. I think, Tom, once again, we saw this in Green Bay. The run shuts down. A couple big plays early, but it shuts down. Sam Weiss puts it all in Trent Dilfer's hands. They're going to fake the play action one way and roll out to this side. And it does a good job of holding the people underneath. That's why there's so much space for Ty J. Armstrong. And Armstrong, a load to bring down at 6'4", 277 pounds. Now, Tampa Bay apparently will let the clock wind down and end the opening quarter. It's been a rough start for Sam Weish and the Buccaneers. They trail on the road in Minnesota. 14-0. You're watching the NFL on Fox. Alongside Ron Pitts, Tom Brenneman, our entire Fox crew back at the Metrodome in Minneapolis. An early 14-0 lead, and we've already heard a great deal about Chris Carter and what a season <laughs> he is having once again after leading the league last year in receptions. Well, he's getting ready for life after football. Earlier this week, he appeared on the Fox Network comedy show Living Single. See, nothing makes you forget double vision or a separated shoulder like a mouthful of hot sandwich. <laughs> but... <laughs> I don't know if the sandwich was good, but he hated the trip out there and back. He had to go out. Now, they've only got one day off. It's a Tuesday. He had to fly out Monday, do this thing. It, it shot all day long. He had to fly back on a red eye at 9, 10, 30 in the morning and go right to practice. He said he hated it. First down pass by Dilfer looking for Alvin Harper. And again, Dilfer hit hard as he let fly of the football. Uh, you know, Going back to Chris Carter, yeah, he hated the trip and all that, but I know one thing he'll like. He'll like those residuals when they come through. Oh, yes. <laughs> 10, 11 years down the road. Well, you ought to know all about that, being a uh, Hollywood yeah, man yourself. That's not me, baby. I'm, I'm happy right here with you in the booth. All right, foul. We're just underway <laughs> in the second quarter. Yeah, yeah, that's what they say, huh? 14 nothing. the throw up top. And it's caught inside the five by Lamar Thomas. Third year pro out of Miami oh. playing today due to the injury to Lawrence Dossey. It'll be first and goal Buccaneers at the two. Working on the right side. He'll be on this side of the screen. He just beats Dwayne Washington one-on-one. -on -one. But I want you to watch the time. Look at the protection. And because Dwayne Washington didn't get a bump, they say when you get a bump on the line of scrimmage, it'll give you about a yard and a half to two down the field. I think he could have used that yard and a half on that play. Moore leads the way for Rhett. And he's to the one. But remember last week, tied at seven against Green Bay. The Buccaneers, first and goal. Tried three straight running plays to Eric Rhett. Could not get in. Settled for a field goal. And it may have been the turning point in the game. Three plays in. And like you said, Tom, denied all three times. That was the turning point in the, in the game. This is where they got to get better. I don't think they need a field goal. Yeah, okay, if it comes down into something. I think for their morale, they need to get six points. And then maybe think about two after that. Gary Ellison, touchdown Tampa Bay. Ellison, the find out of Tennessee Chattanooga. And he's becoming more and more a part of this Buccaneer offense. And Tampa Bay into the end zone for the first time. Walking on the left side, number 60, Pine. 
does an excellent job. Gruber right there, folding down on number 90, Derek Alexander, and that was the difference. The block by Gruber combination was fine, just enough to get the touchdown. I see that's what they didn't have last week. They didn't have a push inside when it came time to get tough to get the point. So Houston, a chance to slice the lead officially in half. Out of the hold of Casey Wilden, and he does. So after 14 points by Minnesota in the first quarter, Tampa Bay begins the second. They trail by seven. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by Oldsmobile. By Hager, 100% cotton, wrinkle-free pants and shirts. And by Burger King, where you get your burgers worth. State Capitol in St. Paul. We're back at the Metrodome where Tampa Bay has driven down the field to get on the board. Buccaneers trail 14-7. And now Michael Husted will kick it away as you see the numbers on the scoring drive. We talked about the poise of Trent Dilfer. That was key, having to step up down by 14 and come back and get points. Ampley. Up to the 23. And Stevens, the first man to meet him. Going back to the touchdown now, I want you to take a look at 74, Paul Gruber. Watch the block he gets and watch the lead block that Eric Rett. Now, Eric Rett is not supposed to be a blocker. He's a running back. He's supposed to carry. He's got close to 1,000 yards. But look at that block there. And you know what's amazing about that, Gruber? He's been out of practice all week long with a, a sore right shoulder. He wasn't supposed to play today, but yet he gets a great block using that right shoulder. Well, Gruber, of course, broke the all-time Tampa Bay record for starts in franchise history. First and 10, Scotty Graham. Out across the 30, a gain of nearly five before Lonnie Martz took him down. Good running game early on here for Minnesota. Well, here's a team that coming into this game ranked 20th in the NFL. They've only averaged about under 99 yards a game running the football. But they've hit a couple good seams, and they're sticking with it. And that's exactly what Warren said they needed to do, stick with that run to give him some balance. And that's when the play action starts to really kill you, to be quite honest. Graham. Shy of the first down, out to the 31. Derek Brooks there to greet it. It almost looks like there's been, you know, the crowd has been taken out of this game now. And it almost looks like there's a little bit of a, an emotional lull now on the Vikings front. You just don't see that firepower that time. Three bucks came across the line. Three guys could have made the tackle. Well, sometimes the worst thing that can happen to a team is to jump out real, real fast to a quick lead. Third and four. Good, good protection. Has a first down throw to Andrew Jordan, the tight end. Out to the 38. Well, right now, for McDonald's game break, let's return to James Brown in Hollywood. All right, Tom. Rams trying to stop their skid. This is the way to do it. Chris Miller swinging gate screen pass. Yes, to the big tight end, Troy Drayton. He booms his way 28 yards to the end zone. And the Rams lead it 7 0 in the second. Ron Pitts would have stopped him, Tom. You're right. I would have. I would have tackled him down by his ankles, but I would have stopped him. You wouldn't take. I probably would have stepped right on my up shoulder, up. but I would have stopped right. <laughs> First down, Moon. Quick throw to Ampley. And he makes a reception at the 41, where forward progress will be marked. Kenneth Gann immediately on the tackle. Warren Moon last week in the loss against Detroit hit on 30 of 47, 384 yards. He's had three consecutive 300-yard passing games. He had four of those back in his Oiler days in 1990. Yeah, you're right. That sounds like a guy that can't play in this league. Mm -hmm. Go back to the ground with Ampelee. And on a second down carry, he gets out to the 45. It'll bring up third and close to four. I'm surprised. Well, no, I'm not surprised. They started off the game Tampa Bay. 
with some inside blitzing. We saw the corners come down, the safeties come down to throw off the timing. But the thing that's killing them, they got that run going on them, so they got to back off on that blitz. And Rusty Tillman, the defensive coordinator, I think he's in a little bit of a situation now where he's not sure what to call. He doesn't know what to expect. Look at that perfect run pass mix. That, that's how you draw it up in the training camp playbook right there. Third and four. Moon. Intercepted by Martin Mayhew, and he's chopped down at the 45, so a big play defensively for Tampa Bay. Martin Mayhew. Martin Mayhew has been criticized at time for giving up the big plays like he did last week against Green Bay, but he's also a guy that will give you the big play, and he gives the big play right there. On this play, the Buccaneers are in what's called cover two. Two safeties deep, two corners on the outside. Mayhew actually squatted. He faked like he was going to cover deep and then came up at the last minute ready to throw. And that's what we're talking about. Martin Mayhew making the big plays. Dilfer on first down. Once it all. And it's intercepted the other way by Orlando Thomas. And he's to the 35. Thomas, the rookie out of Southwest Louisiana, his sixth interception, a bewildered look on the face of Trent Dilfer. It looked as though Trent was just trying to throw it away. You know, he's got a little pressure on him, but obviously he didn't get enough on it. He got enough on it for Thomas, though. That's another one for the trophy case. It's hard to say where Trent Dilfer was trying to go with this ball. You know, he has time to throw, and there was clearly a double team. See right there, he just, he wasn't able to get everything into that ball. They had a double team on Harper, and I think he wanted to throw the ball away, just overthrow it, but at the last minute, you see he got his arm clipped, and he couldn't get a follow-through on the ball. I think that was the difference, but all in all, that was a real strange play. Moon on first down, pump fake. Down the sideline, intercepted for a third straight play. Charles Dimery. Now they're going to get Dimery for an illegal chuck down the field. They ran the up, the out and up on him, the double move, and Dimery did what he had to do to keep from getting beat. Flag was thrown 15 yards downfield from the line of scrimmage, and we'll hear from Gary Lane. You called it. Uh, Jake Reed told us yesterday that these guys are susceptible to the double move. And actually, that's one of the biggest compliments. Illegal contact, defense, five-yard penny, automatic first down. I don't think he meant penny like pasta penny. He meant penalty. Right. Dimery on the outside. They're working on the double move. And just a few yards before that, you can see the flag going right there. Dimery gave him a chuck, and you can't touch the receiver, initiate contact beyond the five yards from the line of scrimmage. But, hey, give him five, not 95. First down, and again, Moon up top has Carter open. And he will score. Four consecutive games, Chris Carter has scored two or more touchdowns. Well, we talked about Martin Mayhew being a feast of famine type guy. He's working on the outside. He'll be on this side of the field. And they came with a fake reverse. And you can see the time there. Warren Moon could just put it up. And like last week, Martin Mayhew a few yards behind. Hard to say whether he thought he had help or had help on the play. But what we can say that's very clear is Chris Carter running through the end zone again, putting his hand in the air with another touchdown. Reve for the extra point. And the Minnesota lead again is swelled to 14. And that's the same thing that killed them last week, the big play. NFL Sunday is brought to you by Mercedes-Benz, where safety, reliability, performance, and value are never optional. Lake of the Isles, one of the 10,000 lakes in the state of Minnesota. 
And the Vikings an early 21-7 lead over Tampa Bay. 9-28 to play until halftime. And Reves kicks it away. Jerry Ellison from the five. Finds a seam and brings it out to the 36. You know, going back to that touchdown, just appreciate the arm and the accuracy of Warren Moon. I mean, you talked about the fake here, and it may hold somebody. But just watch the way he zips his ball out here. And just with little or no effort, Chris Carter doesn't break stride. You're talking about a 45-yard, 50-yard ball right on the money. Well, we had an injury on the kickoff to number 43, Orlando Thomas. The rookie who made his sixth interception, stopping the last Tampa Bay drive. This would be a big blow if Thomas has to leave the game. Well, while we have a moment, let's turn now to our AFLAC trivia question, along with Burt Jones, which quarterback was sacked the most times in a single NFL game? And we'll give you a few moments to think about that. I have the answer for you shortly. Thomas has to lead the game. He's had an interception at four of the last five. Charles Mincy will replace him. Dilber on first and ten to throw. Stripped from behind by Derek Alexander. And Minnesota has recovered. Eric Alexander, he just came around the corner working on the veteran, Gruber. Dilfer steps up, you know, the time, he's waiting, he's waiting, he's waiting. And he comes around the corner, that's an alert play to slap that ball down like that. And boy, I tell you, you, know, it, you gotta put the game now on Dilfer, you gotta ask him to step up and make the plays. And you wonder, is it too much for him right now, for a guy that's only started 15 games? First and ten, Minnesota a chance to blow this one wide open. Reception made by Kadri Ismael, and he's to the 28. Well, going back to Alexander making that play, you know, coming out of Florida State, he had a reputation as being a big play guy. He's got the versatility, he can play up and down the line, and, and he even played some linebacker at college as well. And Dennis says the thing he likes about him he understands his role. He's not a guy that's going to complain about what he doesn't get to do or put me in a position to get more sacks and all that. Thing though, you know, in this leverage, he's got to have better lower body strength. He's got to be stronger on his legs. And that's one of the things that Dennis said he's got to get in the weight room this offseason. Scotty Graham slips the tackle. He'll go to the end zone. Touchdown run by Graham. You think Minnesota's offense has it going again this week? Yeah, and sometimes the run works because of scheme, but also it can work because of bad tackling. And in this case right here, it's just bad tackling. There, Eric Curry had a shot. Wheeler had a shot. Brooks, Ahanatu, they both missed. And, you know, Brown, he, this guy Graham, he's turning into a world beater today. You know, he's going to, he'll be talking about a thousand yard seasons after this week. Reves tax on the extra point. Well, Graham, of course, Minnesota's top rusher in 93. Only appeared in seven games. You know the story. Many of you have heard it. Was working in a pharmacy back in his hometown of Columbus, Ohio, when he got the call. Finished very strong for the Vikings. In a backup role to his former Buckeye teammate Robert Smith this season. But now with Smith out, Graham in. And the Minnesota offense not skipping a beat over these last four weeks. And it's been, like you said, it's been the difference in the last four weeks. And what Warren, Warren told me was that we have put the pressure on ourselves. We got in that meeting, and I fired some people up. I took it on myself. I started with the man in the mirror. But I called some people out in the meeting room and said, hey, you're not playing, you're not playing, and you're not playing. And that is what a leader has got to do. He's got to step it up and get his team going. And there's another man that's going to have to step it up and get this defense going. That's Rusty Tillman, a defensive coordinator. But, you know, Rusty can create good schemes. And on that and in that play, 
He had two guys in the backfield ready to make a tackle, but guys got to tackle. That goes back to training camp. That has nothing to do with the scheme or the, or the coordinator. Guys have to make the tackles and make plays. 28-7, Minnesota leading Tampa Bay. We have 8.27 to go until halftime. Bobby Joe Edmonds, Jerry Ellison wait on the Reveille's kickoff. Edmonds from the one. Brings it out to the 25. A late penalty flag comes in. Tackle made by Suene Alapate. Our first shot at taking a stab at his name. Very nice. <laughs> no foul on the play. The foul was after the ball carrier was down. First down. Well, we gave you a moment to think about our Aflac trivia question. The answer, Warren Moon. We'd like to soon forget about this day. Sacked 12 times by the Dallas Cowboys back on September 29th, 1985. In his career, Moon has been sacked 374 times. And yet he keeps on ticking. Eric Rett, stuffed at the line of scrimmage, may have lost a yard. And that's why people talk about when they play against Warren Moon, you got to get, you know, not just pressure, you got to hit him. You got to put him on the ground early. When he gets on the ground early, he is not nearly effective as he is when he doesn't get on the ground. You give him that time. Tampa Bay did not do that on the start. He got the rhythm, and worse than that, along with that guy, Chris Carter, they got the run going. And that has been the biggest stake in the heart. 12 yards a carry, not a bad day at the office. Dilfer looking for Copeland, and batted down. Terrific coverage by Boy. the second year pro, Dwayne Washington. Dwayne Washington working on Copeland, and Copeland got up screaming for pass interference all the way down the field. This 20, Dwayne Washington. Now, Dwayne Washington doesn't know the ball is coming. He knows right now. And what will happen, I'll tell you, he may have that left arm hook or that right arm hook, and I think he does. But as long as you're looking back at the ball, it's like an unwritten rule. Referees will let you get away with that. As long as you're looking back at the quarterback. Third and ten, here comes the blitz. And Dilford is sacked for the fourth time in the first half. This one by the former Buck, Roderick Thomas. One of the things Sam Weiss wanted to emphasize was that Trent had to be sure and vary the snap count if he felt blitz. 51. Now, he's standing on the line. I mean, he's telling you, he's not up there for his health. He's up there because he's coming. And there comes Brady. And see, Trent never even looked to that other side. And the reason you, you vary the snap count is it gives your team a chance to maybe draw an offside penalty. What a kick by Roby. Fielded by Palmer back at his 26. And he brings it out to the 42 before Ed Brady was able to make the tackle. 59-yard wow. punt. But Palmer, a solid return. Now Terry Bradshaw hosts a one-hour special on Fox one week from tonight. Find out which of your favorite athletes will become part of sports history. Watch the Sports Illustrated Sportsman of the Year Award. Next Sunday, 7 Eastern, 6 Central, on Fox. Yeah, every game is a learning experience for this guy. And he was the first to tell us two weeks ago that, hey, remember, you know, I've only started 13 games. You know, this is his 15. And you gotta, you got to keep that in mind. He's seeing things that he's never seen before. Batted down on the throw to Jake Reed by Thomas Everett. Well, Warren Moon and the Vikings. They're gunning for 40 plus points here in the first half. Still 7.01 to go, and you see the numbers for Warren Moon. And you look at what they have out there. You look at Jake Reed, and he's almost a, a clone of Chris Carter. Big, tall guy, long arms. And you can thank the Dallas Cowboys for that. Because when a team goes and wins a Super Bowl using a certain technique and style, everybody copies it. You saw it with Harper and with Irving, and that's why everybody else around the league is going to that. That's the end thing. <laughs> Big call receiver. And Lee slipping and sliding across midfield. Close to a Minnesota first down. Gant and Dimry. You know, all Amp, able to get him. All Amp Lee is doing is a slipping and sliding, but it all starts up front with the blocking man-to-man. -man. He's got to have hold, and that's the key. 
And then the thing that comes in is vision. You see right there, Culpepper, he gets through. Actually, that was Warren Sapp. Gets through, but it's the vision to see that, okay, I can't go this way, got to go around. And that's what great backs have. Talking to him before the game on the field, he said, without a doubt, I need to have a better game. I need to step up and run more. I can get the ball passing, but I got to show that I can run. Rusty Tillman and the Tampa Bay defense on the field. 28-7 Minnesota in front. 6.31 to go until halftime. And Warren Moon and the Vikings ball at midfield on a third and one. Graham, first down. Into Buccaneer territory to the 47. Graham, seven carries, 75 yards so far here in the first half. <laughs> and that's a guy who on the computer sheets for Tampa Bay that said that when he's in the game, expect run, but, you know, middle run and that's it. Don't expect a lot. Well, you need, need to check the hard drive in that computer. Bobby Phillips. Taken down, may have lost a yard. Tackle made by Hardy Nickerson. 28-7 Minnesota with 5.40 to play in the first half. Talking to Hardy Nickerson last night, he felt that what's happened to this team, because you know Tampa Bay hit that stretch of five games after the Washington game down there that they won in a close one. He felt things were happening so easy. We're getting a turnover, it's a big play. He felt like they got complacent on defense. They lost their aggression. You know, we got to get that back. You know, we need to get it back three games ago. We need it back today for sure. Second and ten. They fake the Palmer. Set up the screen to Ampley. Huge land in front of him. Lee leaps. Touchdown. Light breaking out of the sideline. And all kinds of pushing and shoving going on. Thomas Everett just got his helmet ripped off. That is not the way to take your helmet off. It works much better when you unstrap the buckles. Watch the penetration from the white shirts. This is when you know you got a team going. You run, you run, you run, come back with the pass, and here come the white shirts. How many white shirts do you see now? None. And then here's where I question the aggression on the team. Now, where are the white shirts? And see, there's where the altercation started. Adrian Cooper, 87, working on Thomas Everett. He held him. Well, you see the reaction of Warren Moon. Little did he know at the time that a penalty flag came in very, very late. And Hardy Nickerson wants to know what in the world is going on. Well, I tell you. Adrian Cooper had Thomas Everett on the sideline there. And he was just going to pull and pull and pull until he ripped his face mask off. Wow. Somebody was nice enough to give him his helmet back. But there you go. Illegal contact to call against Tampa Bay. Palmer tripped up all the way back to the 29. Good play made by Derrick Brooks. So the touchdown pass to Ampley off the screen negated. But Minnesota deep into Tampa Bay territory. Well, the damage has been done. The damage is done. Uh, as we keep going back to this with the run. Uh, when you set the run, you get everybody back on their heels. Adrian Cooper back in the game. You get everybody back on their heels. You know, now you can do pretty much what you want. Rusty Tillman, the defensive coordinator, Hard time finding out what to call. Boy, these are the kind of games that you hope never, never happens to you. Moon rolls right. Throws a bullet. What a throw by Moon to Chris Carter. And he's out of bounds at the 21. Penalty flag coming in late again on the near side on this throw to Carter. I want you to watch the crackback right there. You can just see it. But you talked about the bullet. 
And Chris Carter's complaining as to whether or not he had possession and had both feet down inbound. Number 80 was legally chucked out of bounds, came back in and touched the ball, lost him down, third down. Yeah, that's a part of the new rule that came in last year. You cannot, if you, you get taken out of bounds within the legal five yard limit, you cannot be the first person to come back in and touch the ball. And now they're debating whether it was beyond the five yard mark. And boy, Chris was, uh, he was giving the official an earful there, wasn't he? Sure was, back-to-back -back penalties against Dennis Green's team, the holding by Adrian Cooper negated the touchdown and now Carter they when when Denny when he puts that mouthpiece up there on top of his head like that he's serious and when he goes down the other way he, he just wants to get his point across when you put it up over your forehead he's really upset <laughs> that's when you got some explaining to do Actually, the only guy doing the explaining on that plane was Chris Carter That's all. You, you can attribute that to two things, the run, but the big plays. The big pass plays have killed them. Carter has made touchdown catches today. 27. And also 60. This one juggled. And making the grab is this now. The ball came loose, or are they going to say he never had possession? And that is the call. Now, Kadri came across. He didn't. He juggled that ball all the way, and I think that was a case where there was nobody near him. He had a clear shot to the end zone if he holds on. Player was down by contact, fourth down. So he did come up with possession mm -hmm. with, of the ball somehow. Then, of course, they touch him, and he's down. And see, he's looking up, and so is Sam White. They're looking up at the big jumbo monitor here to see exactly what happened. Guys got to be careful looking up at that monitor, boy. Sam White needs every break he can get right about now, trailing with 3.46 to go in the second quarter. Ravaze missed his first field goal attempt with that one from 51 yards. This one a little bit closer. Saxon will spot it at the 34, so a 44-yard field goal attempt. And Ravez has it dripped far right. We talked about special teams being important, the punt return aspect, and Ravez has been solid, but today he is hurting them, and it's a good thing they don't need him yet. Well, Saturday, it's a Fox NFL special. The Arizona Cardinals battle the defending AFC champion San Diego Chargers. Terry Bradshaw and Jimmy Johnson will head for the announcer's booth for that one. Coverage begins at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific time. The NFL on Fox. You know, I look at Reve sometimes, and I wonder when he misses, you know, I think maybe you got to go back to his high school days when he was a linebacker. There's a kicker that's 225. Big guy. He led the team in tackles in high school. Tampa Bay would like to get more points before the half comes to an end. Eric Rett stopped by Derek Alexander. There he's out to the 38. to the 42 he'll be shy of the first down stopped by Broderick Thomas we remind you this game is presented by authority of the National Football League and is intended for the private use of our audience any rebroadcast or the use of this telecast without the expressed written consent of the Minnesota Vikings and the National Football League is prohibited third and a yard down and more crossing midfield the Viking territory at the 47. Rhett got that one all on his own. Ezra Tuaolo came down 
from the nose guard position and was in the backfield. And if it wasn't for good vision by Rhett to step to the left, they get stopped on that play. Well, we have reached the two-minute warning. Minnesota leading Tampa Bay 28-7. Twenty-eight seven, Minnesota in front of Tampa Bay. At the two-minute warning, Buccaneers have the ball on the Viking 48. Yeah, well, what they need now, they, they need a touchdown. And I, I saw George Stewart, the special teams coach, talking to Sam over on the sidelines uh, about you know how close they need to get in for, for Houston and all that. But I I say trash all that. You you gotta get six, you gotta get eight. But you can't go into this locker room down 28-7 and expect the morale to be there. You gotta go in on the up note. On the ground. And Eric Rett may be picked up a yard before Roy Barker dropped him. And Roderick Thomas, 51, coming by to make the play. He used to be with Tampa Bay. Drafted by the Bucks in 89, first rounder. Coming up on the Dockers halftime, J.B. Terry, Jimmy and Howie will have all the scores from around the NFL, plus choice cuts. It's all coming up next on the Dockers halftime. Locked down to a minute 30. Brett, whoa, did he take a lick from Jeff Brady. Fifth year pro out of Kentucky, who is making his fourth start for Jack Del Rio in his prior three. The Vikings are 3 0. Boy, he laid wood. <laughs> He laid wood. You look at his helmet, he knocked his helmet up, he's got the chin strap up by the mouth there, but that's okay, because when you make a good hit like that, you don't feel any pain at all. Third and nine, and here they come for Dilfer. The ball is loose again. Scramble for the football, and Dilfer was able to cover it up. Now, and and that, that really kind of sums up how this first half has gone for Tampa Bay. You know, and and that's, that's the quarterback that's under a lot of pressure. They're bringing what they call the house. Here comes Brady. And that's what Sam was talking about to stagger the snap count. When guys get up there tippy-toeing on that line, and Robert Thomas, 51, coming around the outside, the old buck making the play. But when guys get on that line of scrimmage, that's when you give them a false cut. You can't let them get in the rhythm on getting the pass rush. Taking as much time as he can is Roby. Hill angle for the sideline. Palmer from the 17. Well, he almost got out of that. Yeah, he got out he of it. Is. It was big trouble for the Buccaneers. Finally able to grab a hold of him and not lose it was Dave Moore, 33-yard punt. And three seconds remain in the first half. A half that has been thoroughly dominated by the Minnesota Vikings. <laughs> Curtis Buckley, as we look at Brady right there, and he's talking. To John Randall and really more importantly talking to Ed McDaniel the linebacker he said with Jack Del Rio being out of here I now have to go study more film because when Jack Del Rio is in the game it's like having a coach on the field and that's exactly what Jack Del Rio has been to this defense he's been a coach so it's funny Ed McDaniel he had his little VCR tape he was going to study I said, you got to study you got to work now he said yeah boss that's gonna work Moon will take a knee that will end the first half. And what a first half it has been for the 12-year veteran out of Washington. Warren Moon and the Vikings in front 28-7. If you're Sam Weiss, what do you say at halftime? Well, if you're Sam Weiss, he did what we thought he would do, come out and try to run the football, give it a second shot. He's had some openings. They've had some holes. Rhett has, has ripped off a couple big runs. But the big plays on defense have killed them. They're out of the game plan right now. That's the key. So now he's got to try to throw in passing with Trent Dilfer and it's hard. Well, Fox NFL Sunday will continue with the Dockers halftime next. Stay with us. The NFL on Fox. Dockers halftime is brought to you by Dockers Khakis, proud makers of nice pants. And welcome to the Dockers halftime along with Jimmy Howie and Terry. I'm James Brown. The game you're watching at the half. Tampa Bay trailing big. Denny Green's team looking for the playoff shot. Well, I told Jimmy, he said, Jimmy, we're going to let Moon air it out. But first, let's get the old ground game going. Here's a 66-yard delayed draw up the middle. Amp lead gets by the safety. Vikings up top early, 7-zip. Warren Moon then 
fake the reverse. Safeties and linebackers get out of position. One-on-one -on, -one on the corner is Chris Carter. He hauls in a 60-yarder. This puts the Vikings up 21-7. Then it goes to 28-7. And a route is on, and Jimmy was right about Moon putting it up. Two touchdowns, first half. Mm -hmm. Speaking of putting it up, right now, Atlanta's leading Miami. Don Shula calm on the outside, nervous inside. Fake inside, give it reverse, linebacker blitz. Marco Coleman, the right end, gets caught inside. So Eric Metcalf goes outside, 23-yard run, touchdown. Atlanta up by seven. Marino back, quick release, back in the end zone, Gary Clark. Dolphins go for two, don't make it, 14-9 at the half. And it is now into the third quarter in that game. St. Louis and the Jets. Take a look at the action here. Chris Miller being hit by Marvin Washington. Marvin Washington, 97 on top of your screen, leaves his feet and then tilts his head down. He is ejected for this hit on Miller. Miller has to leave the game. Mark Rippon, here you see Miller being carried off. Mark Rippon now is the quarterback for the Rams. And take a look at what Mark Rippon does, Terry, when he's in there. He throws it and it is picked. And take a look at what Gary Jones does as he heads downfield for the Jets, and he's taking it into pay dirt, and we're all tied. And right now, oh, they're, just, they're trying to kick the extra point. We'll keep you updated on that one right now. Jets trailing by one, and now they kick the extra point, and it is all tied. Up to the date. Up to the date. Jim Everett, 50-yard bomb out to the left side. He goes to Quinn early. Ty Law is beaten. Remember, he took the place of Maurice Hurst, who was cut, cut earlier. Saints, 17, Patriots, 14 at the half. Curtis Martin, two touchdowns, ties the season record. Yes, indeed, Steve Grogan did that one. All tied between the Bengals and the Packers. Indianapolis and Carolina, likewise, the score there at halftime. Houston and Pittsburgh, the Steelers, have finally moved out by a touchdown. That at halftime as well. As we come back inside, Jimmy Terry mentioned that you said Moon was going to open it up. My goodness, looking impressive. Well, I tell you what, the Minnesota Vi uh, Viking coaches were very upset in their first Tampa game. They thought they played poorly. They gave up some cheap touchdowns. They turned it over. They felt like they'd get redemption in this ball game. They thought they'd play well. They think they have they got a chance to get in the playoffs. Bill for sack five times really hasn't had much of an opportunity to drop back and throw. Chris Carter, third straight 1,000-yard-plus season. Warren Moon, 39, 40, 41, 42. The guy can just flat out chuck the rock. Well, the Bucks start 5-2 and two and slipping badly now. All right, folks, when we come back to Hollywood, we'll present you this week's selection of Choice Cuts. Brenneman, Ron Pitts, our entire Fox crew back at the Metrodome. A first half dominated by Minnesota. We've seen the big plays from this offense the last four weeks, but normally through the air. Yeah, but you know what? The running has set up those big pass plays. And when I think about that, I'm going to this one. You look at the blocks here, 77 Stringer and 62 Christie, the key blocks on this play. And if you can get a Hardy Nickerson block one-on-one, -on -one, like 62 Christie does right there, that's the key. And of course, Jake Reed, he comes down and gets another block. And the thing that's amazing about this, Tom, you got two guys, Amp Lee, you know, especially Amp Lee, who is considered a passing guy all the way. You wouldn't expect the run. And here we see the pass, the Carter, the touchdown, perfect throw by Warren Moon, the only place he could put the ball. And once again, some kind of mix up in the secondary, not sure where. But that man, has he's getting very used to that end zone here. Some of the numbers from the first half, and they tell the entire story of why it's a 28-7 Minnesota lead. Well, this right here, we've talked about this, the run. They didn't expect that, and that's really killing them and setting up everything else. But the sacks, we talked about having to get the pressure on Warren Moon and sack him. None. Time of possession, not holding on to the ball like Minnesota is. You want to reverse that if you're Tampa Bay. You want to sit down Warren Moon and Chris Carter and Jake Reed. Well, Casey Weldon, who has come on in relief of Trent Dilfer four different occasions this year, begins to get loose on the Tampa Bay sideline. Well, Sam Weiss told us now at this point in the year, now he's not coming up here to develop a quarterback. He's coming up here to win the game. And that tells me Trent struggled one more series, or if they don't get the spark they're looking for, because not all of it has been his fault, that he'll make a change just to get that spark. Bobby Joe Edmonds brings it out to the 27. Trent Dilfer, for the time being, remains a Tampa Bay quarterback. Weldon has led the Buccaneers to wins twice this season. 
Once against Carolina, the other against Cincinnati, and Dilfer has been in big time pressure all day long. Yeah, you got this, but you know what? This right here is just as bad as the sack because that causes the fumbles, that causes the bad throws and all the miscues. Derek Red on first down, and that's been pretty much the story for the Tampa Bay rushing game this week, just like it was last week against Green Bay. Yeah, and the key that I see is that the Vikings are getting bodies around the ball. They talk about defenses that swarm and play pursuit. They know that priority number one is to stop the run. Don't let Eric Red get those big plays he's had, and then put the pressure back on Trent Hill. Second down and ten, Bucks hurry it up. And a quick throw and catch is made by Horace Copeland. He needed to get to the 37 for a first down. It'll be very close. Now we're seeing the hurry up. We haven't seen that this game. Maybe once or twice, but we know that Sam Weiss coming from San Francisco and starting a little bit about, or thinking of a little bit out there, but being more known for it from Cincinnati. We'd expect to see more of that in a game like this. So it is the first down. And Dilfer out of the shotgun. Steps up. Rose near side to Copeland who steps out of bounds at the 46. He'll be two yards shy of a first down, a gain of eight. Protection good that time. And you also have to keep in mind, Tom, that they may hit a few deep balls here because the secondary of the bike is, I think Tony Dungy, the defensive court, they're kind of calling off the dogs a bit. 28-7, the thing they don't want to do is give up the big play. And there's Tony right there. Boy, Tony's a guy that remains calm all the time. You never see him get upset, get going. But he's going to give them the underneath stuff. He's not going to get the big play. Here. Second and three, Eric Rett took a shot from Tuaolo. Lost a yard, back to the 45. It'll bring up third down and a little more than three for the Buccaneers. Just because of the way he aligns in that position, he lines up in what they, it's called the Nance position, the way he's cocked in at a 45 degree angle. You remember Mean Joe Green used to line up like that with the glory days of the Steelers. What that does, it makes it hard to double team him. So a lot of times you'll see him as a first man in through the backfield. But he is, he's trying to do his best to make people forget about Henry Thomas. Third and three, Dilfer in trouble. Escapes. Throws wide open, Dave Moore on the near side. And he's inside the 40 all the way down to the 35 at Tampa Bay first down. The Moore back, Sam Weiss calls him the Moore back. He said we took him from tight end because we wanted somebody that was more of a back like that. But you're going to see Randall, 93, he's going to have a clear shot. Look at that arm over right there. Just clubbed Ian Beckles out of the way. And good movement, good eluding. Don't forget, Trent Dilfer's a strong guy. Yeah, he can get away from a lot of things. And Moore just working back to the quarterback. Very smart, keeping an eye on the quarterback. Sam told us the hardest thing he was trying to get Trent to do was when he got in trouble and scrambled, keep your fingers on the laces and keep your vision downfield. Dilfer step up. Has an open receiver and overthrows Horace Copeland. Uh, they tried to take the shot. You can, you can hear the trash being talked down there. There's a guy that they they, they missed not having in the lineup. I think you know, you, I go back to that Philadelphia game, the opening game of the season. They got the win up there. He had a huge game. That's who they need to compliment because it's too easy to put the double team on, uh, on Alvin Harper. I think you got to have somebody else to help him. Tampa Bay, it's opening possession of the second half. Jerry Allison tries to break it to the outside, is tripped up by Harlan Barnett. Former Patriot and Cleveland Brown in his sixth season out of Michigan State. Barnett coming up in that strong safety position. There he is right there. They're trying to sugar a little bit of that eight-man front. They got two guys on him, and they don't block him. Boy, that's a Pro Bowl-type play there. I mean, he's got Pine coming out on him with 282, a tight end. Moore, 250. 
and you're a DB just barely over 200, and you can still make a tackle like that. Those are the kind of plays that keep you around for a few years. Third and 17, play blown dead. There was movement along the line of scrimmage. Now they're on the referee's case. Yeah, it's 28 <laughs> on the black and white. Yeah, no, nobody's safe out there, boy. That's why they give refs the right snap. Fault start. Offense, number 74. Five-yard penalty, third down. Paul Groove in that left tackle position. And Sam, now he's going to give his shot in the ear pull. So five more yards. The Buccaneers back up. So rather than third and 17, it goes to third and 22. They have to get all the way down to the Minnesota 25. How about that stat? Dilford like to break it right here. Well short of the first down. Reception made by Harris, who breaks it back to the inside. And maybe a yard short of the first down. Orlando Thomas on the tackle. This is the guy we asked him yesterday. Do you feel like Jackie is your go-to guy? He said, what I feel like, as we look at Harris right here, is going to come down and work out. I feel like he is my comfort zone because I know with Jackie's experience, I know where he's going to be. So I can look the field over. If I don't see what I want, I can just turn and fire it. And that's the big key right there, the way he gives that second effort to, to get close to the first down. Fourth and a yard, Tampa Bay trailing by 21 is forced to go for it. And Dilford, play clock running down to five. He'll have to hurry. Rhett escapes a tackle of Barker and close to the first down. Robert Griffith over there pushing him close, but the spot of the ball, wow, it's tough to tell from here. And it is a Tampa Bay first down. And now pushing and shoving Corey Fuller, the rookie out of Florida State, and Lamar Thomas. Boy, now, there are two guys. Fuller out of Florida State, Thomas out of Miami. They haven't <laughs> liked one another for a long time. Uh, I guarantee you, they didn't talk about old times and shake hands when they walked out in the field, pregame warm-up. Fuller, and Fuller's a guy, you know, Fuller stepped up. He had the altercation with, with Trent Dilfer in the first game. He supposedly spit on Trent Dilfer. So uh, that, that, that's pretty bold stuff for a rookie coming up. There are Florida State rookies littered all <laughs> over the field today. You talk about a great college defense. And, and they are heard as well as seen. Dilfer. Across the middle, and the reception made down to the 20-yard line by Bobby Joe Edmonds, his first catch of the day. We understand Ed McDaniel has had to leave the lineup. Stinger in his shoulder, and we'll find out whether he can make it back. Just get it off. First down reception made by Horace Copeland to the Minnesota 18. Dilfer's got to take this offense like he's doing right now because the defense, they are giving him areas to throw to. Like we said before, Tony Dungy is not blitzing. He is calling the dogs off for all intents and purposes, and he's going to put even more pressure on Trent Dilfer to go down the field and score. Ian, we are not going to give it to you, he's saying. You are going to have to take it. And that's what Dilfer's going to try to do, is take what they give him. 12th well, play of the drive. B. Pearson. And just when it appears as though Tampa Bay will get things going. Fault start. Offense, number 69, five-yard penalty, still first down. It's another penalty. You know, Ryan, you and I have talked about this so many times. Sam Weiss has come under tremendous pressure. Yeah, Pearson there just getting up just a, a tad soon. And I don't play Pearson because the way Barker and Alexander and Randall, the way they're coming through, he's got to come out of the blocks early on these guys.
First and 15, Gilford. Sack for the sixth time today. James Harris, the first to arrive on the scene. And that's why Pete Pearson was leaning out of there. You know, they're trying to get a jump start. Harris on the other side. He's working on Gruber inside. Remember, Gruber's got that shoulder. And I got to believe that's bothering him because he got beat that time on the inside, which would be his right shoulder. And now that's the difference. If you look at Gruber there, Trent has got to throw that ball into the stand. Don't get pushed out of field goal range. Throw it into the stand. A penalty, a sack. Now second and 25. Wilfer runs into his own man. Gets out of trouble and just throws it away. And Dilford having words and goes after John Randall at the bottom of the pile. Dilford felt he was hit either late by the two-time pro bowler, and he went right after Randall. I'll tell, I'll tell you what, a whole lot of stuff happened that play. Roy Barker, he was so mad about missing the sack. Before the play is done, he slams his helmet on the ground. The helmet explodes. Then, Dilfer decides to get brave and beat up on John Randall on the ground. Oh, I tell you. <laughs> now, he makes the throw, and that's legal right there. But let's see. I don't know why Trent thought he could do that. We have multiple personal fouls. Personal foul, throwing his helmet, number 92, on the defense. He's ejected. Personal foul, blow to the head, number 12. He's ejected. Wow. Trent Dilfer has been thrown out of the game along with Roy Barker. A lot of stuff happened on that play, huh, pal? I should say. <laughs> now, Barker, Barker throws his helmet down, and that's, he's ejected because that's a form of unsportsmanlike conduct. But he was so mad that he missed the sack, he just slammed his helmet on the ground. Chin strap, foam, rubber, ear pads went all over the place. He's out of the game. Now Trent Dilfer, on a legal tackle, he just decided to go off. And he gets thrown out of the game. Well, you see Dilfer getting, getting a high five. Yeah, high fives uh, from his teammates. Barker, none of his teammates want to talk to him. Well, maybe this will maybe this will fire him up. Now Randall's on the chase, and Randall is completely legal here. He can make this tackle. That's not the problem. But I think that Trent thought he was late, and now he just got in his face. And it, they called him for pushing him down and pushing his head. We couldn't see it there, but now, yeah, he's got to leave the field. He's got to go in and get that early shower. So Dilfer... That's why you always dress good to the stadium because you never know if you're going to get ejected and have to come back out. You want to look nice standing on the side. I have a feeling, Dilford, I'd be surprised if he came back out. He's going to take a lot of heat. Parker will also leave. So Casey Weldon, the fourth-year quarterback out of Florida State, comes into the game. He's not played since Detroit four weeks ago. in on a third and 25. And his first throw incomplete looking for Courtney Hawkins. I'm not so sure. Well, I see Houston coming on, but I don't know. I'm not so sure that they weren't in a position where he needs to try to put that ball toward the end zone. Get, you know, get it down. That was nowhere near a first down. And they're just trying to get in field goal range, but they got to start thinking six. Well done will spot the ball at the 37, so a 47, 48 rather, yard field goal try. And Tampa Bay has to spend a timeout. 6.36 to go in the third quarter. Sam Weiss and the Buccaneers trail by 21.
Fox. NFL Sunday is brought to you by Volkswagen. On the road of life, there are passengers and there are drivers. Drivers wanted. By Red Lobster, for the seafood lover in you. By IBM, solutions for a small planet. And by Coors Light, shipped cold to preserve the clean taste of the Rockies. Coors Light, tap the Rockies. Famous Mall of America here in Minneapolis. Rumor has it that you left that guy tickets. Close personal friend. 47-yard field goal try by Michael Houston. Has the distance, and it is good. So Houston connects from 47 yards away. And Tampa Bay chews up 8 minutes and 24 seconds. They trail by 18. Sam Weish and the Buccaneers get a field goal by Michael Husted from 47 yards away. 6.31 to go in the third quarter. Minnesota 28-10 lead. Well, we saw Sam Weish on the side there getting everybody fired up. And you know, when the head coach comes over to talk to you one-on-one, -on -one, you know you better turn it up a notch because it's getting serious. This mile from the three. And he brings it up to the 27. Tripped up by Wardell Rouse. So Minnesota gets the ball for the first time in the second half. We'll be right back to Minneapolis. 28-10, Minnesota leading Tampa Bay. 6.21 to go, and the Vikings here in the third quarter getting the ball offensively for the first time. Yeah, but the run has been the big deal. This game has been turned because of the run. Have to go all the way back to week two when Robert Smith was still healthy. When Minnesota piled up the season high 154 yards. But Moon comes out throwing through the hands of Charles oh, Evans. Man. And Moon, very fortunate that was not picked up. Well, America can breathe a little easier for a while because Chevy Chase and his family are going to Europe for their wildest vacation ever. Hit the road with National Lampoon's European Vacation. Tuesday at 8 Eastern, 7 Central on Fox. It's like most of our weekends with this merry crew around the NFL. Second and 10. To give us camp lead. And he's pushed out of bounds. Maybe about a foot shy of the first down out to the 36. Well, I, I know Ampli is a running back, but his forte has been receiving out of the backfield. But I think at the end of this game, he should go in and get a clause in, in his contract for rushing. Because this guy is killing. That's Brian Billick, the offensive coordinator. And I question the opening the play with the pass, being that they're ahead and in their own territory and all that. But he wants to open up first down, getting the Bucks thinking pass back on the heels and slam them some more at the run. Third in the yard in the second effort. Enables Warren Moon to get across the 36. And a Minnesota first down. 5.45 to play in the third, and Minnesota leading 28-10. I thought it was interesting what Warren Moon said to us yesterday about his goal. You know, he is here and came here to go and win the Super Bowl. And it's interesting, he didn't say go, he said to go and win it. And when we asked him about, well, what happens contractually, because he's going into his option year, you know, he said, hey, we'll see what they want to do here, and if a change is necessary, I'll make sure I want to go someplace where I can have a legitimate shot to win the whole thing. First down carry is Scotty Graham, and let's send it back to Hollywood to James Brown for a McDonald's game break. Hey, Tom. Terry Bradshaw talked about the quick release of Jeff George. Here's an example of it. Back with time. He's looking for Terrence Mathis. Flicks the Miami defense. Touchdown. Dolphins missed the two-point conversion. So lead it in the fourth by 11. Take it back to Tom and Ron. Well, you know, that's a game of two releases right there between uh, Marino and, and him. But there's a look at the standings. And that's why this game is so key. And that's why the loser of this game is everything but mathematically eliminated. Second and six, Moon throws. Ampli out of the backfield. 
and he wasn't able to just stretch out for the first down. He tried to make a couple of quick moves, and he comes up about a yard short. Martin Mayhew able to throw him down. Amp Lee third in the NFC in receiving for a running back, and that, once again, we talked about what happens when teams that win, what kind of influence they have on the rest of the league. Well, the 49ers with that West Coast style using the back, and he represents that that's what he is. Third and a yard. Graham, the lone setback, he'll get the carry. And very close to the first down, Hardy Nickerson came up to make the stop along with Thomas I don't Thomas think Everett. he got it. He got stuck. And it depends on how they spot it. I think you're right, Ronnie. And I don't blame him for running to that side. You got John Jarek on the right side, 270. Corey Stringer, 340. <laughs> hey, Corey, get a push for all intents and purposes. Well, it is good enough for a Minnesota first down. You know, Ronnie, you were talking about Warren Moon. This is 12 season after six years in the CFL. And you asked him yesterday about his goals at 39 years old. My goal right now is to try and win a championship. And whether it's here or somewhere else, that's what I'd like to do before I retire. And if that doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. But at least I can say when I do retire that I gave it everything I had. Um, you know, it takes a lot to win a championship. You got to be on a team that's very talented. You got to have some luck along the way. You got to have a pretty much injury-free season. Uh, there's just a lot of things that have to go your way. But uh, I know that if you give effort, good things can happen. Well, Warren didn't think much of that play as he is <laughs> that didn't sacked go his for way. the first time today. Uh, well, that, that that's something that needed to be done about two and a half quarters ago. Well, Moon with 3.10 left in the third quarter. You see 204 yards. We mentioned he comes in with three consecutive 300-yard passing games. He has put together four of those in a row, but you have to go all the way back to 1990 then, of course, with Houston. Screen and overthrown. Had an eye on Amp Lee. I tell you right now, if Nickerson's able to get over there a step sooner, he's racing the other way for six. They come with the influence. Look at the way Warren's rolling out, trying to give the influence to the backside. But that is what you call good backside discipline by the Buccaneers. Red Culpepper, Nickerson. In other words, they knew where their responsibility was. They didn't go chase something that was somebody else. It's called staying home. Third down and 11. Big play defensively for the Buccaneers to stop this Minnesota drive. Uh, that's Cul Culpepper inside over the nose, over the nose of the center. Unless somebody moved on the opposite line. Start. Yep. Offense, number 82. Five-yard penalty, still third down. There's no excuse for that. that that's that's uh, Kadri Ismail. He's a wide receiver. He knows the count. He, those guys, you never see them move. Well, they I mean, back he, him he, up five. It goes to third and 16. He doesn't have to block anybody man to man. He doesn't have to have a guy coming around the corner on him. He just has to go when the ball goes. Moon from the 41. Good protection. Juggled and then caught by Jake Reed. First down all the way to the Buccaneer 35. A gain of 23 yards on what was a third and 16 for the Vikings. They'll move the chains. Jake Reed right there. He's going to come down and work the inside in here. And they're playing his zone. Mayhew tried to undercut, but look at the concentration. And I have to go back to what he was saying about the eye exercise. He thought coming into the league four years ago, five years ago, that, that he had bad hands because he could never catch anything coming from his right side. But he had that lazy right eye. They worked on it every day. He caught 200 balls a day, and it's paid off. In fact, even Kadri Ismail is working in the same eye exercise because it helped him. It just helped his concentration mm -hmm. on him. Scotty Graham wrestled down by Mark Wheeler, a gain of two. 
And pretty soon I'm going to be doing those eye exercises so I can see more up here. Well, Jake Reed and, uh, and Chris Carter would make you think about it because the tandem last year set an NFL record for most receptions in a season by a receiving duo, 207. A lot of people don't know this, but uh, Dale Carter, the cornerback with the Kansas City Chiefs, that's the brother of Jake Reed. So football kind of runs in the family a bit. And once again, like I said, he's that tall guy. Look at him on Magruder. You can just see the height, the height advantage. And that's a bigger target for Warren Moon to see coming out of the pocket. Carter. Inside the 25, Minnesota first down to the 23. Coming up next, the second half of our Fox NFL Sunday doubleheader, the Washington Redskins. They blasted the Dallas Cowboys at RFK, but now it goes to Irving, Texas. Other exciting regional action, including Philadelphia and Seattle. Check low school listings for the game and time in your area. Under a minute to play, third quarter, Minnesota in front of Tampa Bay, 28-10. picks up a yard and for those that may be a little confused Ron was exactly correct when he said that Dale Carter is the brother of Jake Reed Chris Carter a famous brother of course Butch Carter former basketball star at Indiana who's it they took a tough one yesterday against Kentucky kind of like those Bruins did but we won't talk about that will we They've been getting beaten regularly. 28 <laughs> 10 into the third. Fox NFL Sunday will continue after these messages from your local Fox station. Alongside Ron Pitts, Tom Brenneman back at the Metrodome, 28 10 Minnesota. Well, when the calendar turns to the month of November, at least since Dennis Green's been here, Ronnie, that's when the Vikings get things in gear. Yeah, that's when you, they play, and you have to play in the month of November. That's when the jockeying starts for the playoff position. And the thing that he said has been the difference in this year is that he's had to play with younger players. And you've seen that really on the defense in the second round. Second down and 10 throw incomplete to Amp Lee. But since Dennis Green took over four years ago, the Vikings are 9-4 and four in the month of December, bettered only by Dallas and San Francisco at 9-3. and three. We go back to last year, Minnesota entered the month of December 7-5. and five. They won three of their last four to get in as a wild card. 93, they were 5-6 and six going into December, won four of their last five to qualify that year. So 7-2, and two, the last two. And like you said, that's the key. He's good in the division. to the end zone in and out of the hands of Chris Carter it would have been his third touchdown reception of the day Stargell broke it up we'll try to take this shot there's Carter. he's going to come down in motion here and work right up the seam now Stargell 45 is going to hang right in what they call his hip pocket and now what this does is it make it makes Warren have to try to loft that ball over the top actually under through it and boy, that's what happens when you don't catch the ball. You take the shot anyway. Tony Bowie coming in. Might have had a little crown of the helmet action that time. You saw the way Chris grabbed his head. Now, Chris didn't practice all week long. He had the growing pull. So he did his movie or did his TV show and then came in and put on the ice. 42-yard field goal is good by Raves. So he finally connects one of three on the day. And the lead goes to 31-10, Minnesota. A three-touchdown lead for Minnesota, 31-10, 14-45 to play from the Metrodome. And Minnesota continues to throw up numbers. Four straight games, 30 or more points. That hasn't been done here, as you saw, in 30 years. I think the playoff experience, the big game pressure of knowing when you have to turn up and when your back is absolutely against the wall is, is also a key here. We talked about the run and all that, and the big plays. Yeah, that, that's a factor. But coming into this game, the Vikings have been here before, and they know what needs to be done.
Minnesota has thoroughly dominated this game from the very first quarter when the Vikings took a 14-0 lead. Jerry Ellison pushed out of bounds in the 28. And that's where Casey Weldon and company will put it in play. 14-37 to go. And a 31-10 Minnesota lead. 31-10 Minnesota in front of Tampa Bay. 14-37 to go. Minnesota looking to get to 7-6. And, and we talked at the open of this telecast that the loser of this game will have an enormously difficult time reaching the NFC playoff. Casey Weldon on for Trent Dilfer, who is ejected, and Alvin Harper may have been thrown behind him, couldn't hang on. Right now, for a McDonald's game break, let's go to Hollywood and James Brown. All right, Tom, Miami trying to come back. This is a 13-play drive, capped by the first rush of that drive. That for the score by Bernie Parmalee. Shula calling for the two-pointer. It's missed, and it remains 2015 Falcons in the fourth. Tom and Ron. All right, JB, you see the wild card picture and the playoff picture in the AFC. Miami desperately needing a win. Been a most disappointing year for Don Shula's team. Here they come after Weldon. He gets it away to Jackie Harris, a tight end, who's dragged down by Harlan Barnett. He appears to be about a yard shy of the first down. I don't understand why we haven't seen more of Jackie Harris in this offense. Uh, it, 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 he never really has materialized this year. And talking to him yesterday, he said, I'm a vertical tight end. I'm being used on a lot of short stuff. And he's right. you got to get Jackie Harris up the field. He's a tight end that runs like a back or a wide receiver. That's a perfect matchup right there on a, on a strong safety. Jackie Harris is going to win that one. I think you got to make an attempt to start working Jackie Harris in. Should have worked him in the whole season. Third in the yard. And a first down. Picked up by Eric Rep. Tua Olo making the tackle well. Jackie Harris, you mounted it up last week. They got him plenty involved. He had 10 receptions. That's a career high, 122 yards, and established a Buccaneer record for catches in a game by a tight end. He's already broken the Tampa Bay record for receptions by a tight end in a season this year. And on top of all that, he's got a real estate license, so he can sell real estate. I don't think he has to worry about that quite yet. He needs to try to buy some real estate down the vertical part of the field. Nobody wants to sell him any. Flag down on the play. Weldon steps up, throws down path. And Harris couldn't get it. Well, I guess they heard it. There it is. There's the shot. And just a step overthrown. Not, a, not really a bad pass by Weldon. Harris got two hands on it. But it doesn't matter because they got a flag down. Well, Gary Lane has had to turn time and time again just as he's ready to make the call. Tampa Bay, wouldn't have mattered if Harris would have caught it down the field or not. Illegal formation. Number 82 covered up the tight end. Penalties declined. Second down. That's a form of a legal formation. Basically, what has to happen is seven men have to be on the line of scrimmage to help determine eligibility. That's, a, that's the easiest way to figure out what all that means. Second down and 10. 13.03 to go. Trailing by 21. They'll give it Derek Red. And he's caught from behind by Martin Harrison. Jeff Brady also reached in there to get a hand on Red. Now they got a block on now Ezra Tuaolo that time, but he's he's been a force. Now, this is a spin move he's gonna come with, and they say never spin that close to the line of scrimmage, but you see Pine comes down. And it looked like they had a chop block set up for him. It's a good thing he did spin. You know, he, he's got a good spin move on the field and on the dance floor. He can also sing. Oh, he Guy's can really sing. He Sunday. keeps spinning like that. He ends <laughs> up out of the league. He can sing for a while. Weldon. Flips 
Gives it to Jackie Harris. First down and out of bounds at the 43. Now, speaking of the singing of Tuaolo, let's listen in. The recording session this past summer. Tell me what can I say? Well, come on, baby, help me through this maze. My life is in a day. Not bad. Hey. The key to that, you got to have the hair right and the glasses right and the tank top. You just can't go in there and do it. You got to look the part, too. It's not how you sound, it's how you look. <laughs> right. That's important with us, isn't it? <laughs> Very important. <laughs> Carries it down to the 42. Well, you being a Hollywood guy, you know all about that sort of thing. Well, we're laughing. Question is, why is this man laughing? You'll find out when Fox takes a look at all the incredibly dumb and funny things that have happened in America during the last week. Catch the premiere of What's So Funny tonight after Married with Children right here on Fox. Nothing funny for the Buccaneers today. A second and eight. 11-15 to play here at the Metrodome. 31-10 Minnesota. Wow, made by Horace Copeland, a first down to the Minnesota 28. I think Casey Welding, Welding understands how the rhythm of the offense has to work a little bit better than Trent Dilfer, and he should. It's one, two, three, bam. See, he knows that if a receiver is going to run an 18-yard out, and if a pre-snap look, he's going to be, the corner is going to be at eight yards, then he should have the play. So he's just going to step back and wing it out there. And that's the difference. I think Trent is not sure of all that. And it comes down to confidence of knowing that a guy will be at 18 when he's supposed to be at 18. Looking for Thomas. And he cannot hang on. Thomas said he had the football. And now the officials are going to debate it, it looks like. The Wait. back judge waved it off saying incomplete. And he's looking for help. Thomas says touchdown. Well, now the key thing here is that if he was not touched and left his feet, hitting the ground does not mean that you have possession of the ball because the ground can't cause a fumble. But it, that, that, that's not what it means in that case if you leave your feet to die for a ball. Well, now they'll relay the message to Gary Lane. And it is incomplete. Thomas there, we can see he's going to lay out right here, get the ball. That's actually interference. They don't call that. Now, he's got it. It's number 69. 10-yard penalty. Still first down. Well, they, they got the hold anyway, so on Pearson. But that looked like a touchdown. He comes down with the ball. The man is on him. The ground can't cause a fumble. The debate is possession. The way he had it cuffed, I don't know. I think that's a touchdown. And, you know, we were talking uh, earlier about Sam Weiss coming under so much fire with Tampa Bay. Uh, how many times have we seen today where a penalty has put the Buccaneers uh, yeah. in a hole on a big third and Absolutely. three? Now it goes to third and eight. Now, uh, now look at right, right. Now touchdown. they're out of field goal range. First and 20. Weldon, good protection. Rolling to the end zone. What a catch made by Alvin Harper. Touchdown. No penalty flags on the play. Thomas wanted offensive pass interference. That's the size of Alvin Harper. 6'4", 6'5". He leans right over the top of Thomas and makes the catch. And boy, you know he wants that one after last week. Same kind of throw. And Casey Weldon... He's going to work on the double move. He's going to take him to the out right here. And watch, they're playing his zone, so, so uh, Fuller's going to turn him loose. But Orlando Thomas is going to play the interception all the way, and that's a push-off. That's a push-off on Alvin Harper. They don't call him for it, and that's what Thomas was complaining about. Houston on for the extra point, and it is good. So Alvin Harper, who dropped a touchdown pass, on a throw from Weld or a throw from Dilfer a week ago, hangs on this time, and the lead is 14. 
Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by Toyota and their full line of quality cars and trucks. Toyota, I love what you do for me. By Home Box Office. By McDonald's, official break of the NFL. And by FedEx, for documents, packages, and freight worldwide, our most important package is yours. Back at the Hubert H. Humphrey Metrodome, Alvin Harper has made a touchdown reception, 31-17. Minnesota in front. And this is Ample E. He's down to the 21 penalty flags, come flying in. Tackle made by Jerry Ellison, but again, we'll find out who the infraction is on. Little block in the back on the return team. 10-yard penalty, first down. We'll take a break. Back to the Metrodome in a moment. When you're a rookie defensive back, you can bet that a veteran like Alvin Harper is going to give you a little of this right before a catch. And they had a little incidental contact with the feet, but he, he, he shoves them just enough to get some separation to make the catch. That's very smart and tricky. And the first touchdown pass you saw in 300 passing attempts by Buccaneer quarterbacks. Casey Weldon getting this one. And the first down handoff. Scotty Graham. And he picks up maybe a yard. Well, the last touchdown pass for the Buccaneers all the way week four against Washington. Dilford, the go-ahead score to Alvin Harper in the fourth quarter. It was the last time Dilfer threw a touchdown pass. Call was a disputed one. And for Dilfer, he still has not thrown a touchdown pass in now 256 throws. Moon on a second and eight. And he dumps it off to Graham who has the first down out to the 24-yard line. Warren Moon has such great instinct in the pocket of knowing when he's got to get that ball off. You know, he uses up what they call, he uses up all his time in the pocket. Now watch Chidi Ahana to 72. And there's Santana Dotson. I mean, look at that. He has a feel, a sense for when somebody is just about to come down on him and he gets rid of the ball. And the timing aspect, that all goes back to working on that run and shoot down in Houston. And also up in Canada. That's basically run and shoot football for all intents and purposes. And it's based on time. Short drop. And the throw is good to Jake Reed, who gains seven. Under nine minutes left in Minnesota, leading by two touchdowns. Well, coming up next, the second half of our Fox NFL Sunday doubleheader. As the Washington Redskins take on the Dallas Cowboys. Plus other exciting regional action. Check local listings for the game and time in your area. Minnesota eight and a half minutes away from going to seven and six. The Buccaneers would slip to six and seven. Second and three. Spinning out of a tackle is Evans. And he has the first down out to the 35. When you look at the computer sheets, and they show you the amount of run versus certain personnel. They'll tell you how much they ran when Ampley was in the game, how much they ran when, when Graham was in the game. And based on those sheets, they were not supposed to do much running at all. And it, you know, it, it's hard to win in situations like that where they can come out and go against the tendency, which is what every team really wants to do this time of year. Go against what your computer sheet shows and be successful. Go, 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 go. and then the exchange juggled from Christie to Warren Moon. 27 passing plays, 27 running plays for Minnesota today. When you get the game plan on Tuesday morning, that, that's what it looks like. Guys, we want to split it right down the middle. We want to be balanced. That's what they tell every newspaper reporter in town all week long. And they come out and they do it. 
And don't forget that, uh, that line up front. You've got basically a young offensive line, except for Randall McDaniel. But Stussy's been in the league two years. Corey Stringer, he's a rookie. Garrick's been in the league only three years. Garrick, excuse me. Second down, Moon, a quick throw. And Chris Carter dives out to the 48, another Minnesota first down. And for Chris Carter, his sixth catch of the afternoon for 137 yards. Go back and talk about what we felt each team had to do to win that they hit Moon early. They haven't done that one sack. And you know, when I say hit, hit him. Two knockdowns, that's not enough for him. Control the clock, time of possession, 24 minutes, 28 seconds. A little bit better than it was in the first half, but they got out of their game plan early and were forced, they were forced to control the ball and, and try to make big plays. Moon once more, he has an eye on Reed, and it's intercepted by Martin Mayhew. And he has Ooh. some daylight wow. to the 37-yard line. So Tampa Bay with 6 4 to play will get it back, trailing by two touchdowns. And don't quite phone this one in oh, yet. that's true. No, not at all. I mean, they've had their problems now. And I wonder why you're even going to throw the ball in a situation like this. Go ahead and run it. Well, the interception made by Mayhew, and then listen into this. Whoa. See what that is? That's payback time. Because those guys have been blocking you, pushing you in the back all day long as a defender. So when an interception happens, it's an unwritten rule that you go find somebody and lay them out. Nickerson and the rookie Melvin Johnson tagging Charles Devin. Ooh, nearly intercepted by Robert Griffith on a throw across the middle. Troy Fuller, the rookie, also there. Casey Weldon, he's got a little bit of experience now. Four years in the league, Florida State. He went over into the uh, World League last year and played with the Barcelona Dragons this winter. And all that does is give you a chance to, to improve a guy, to give him more reps. And I don't think it'll happen with Trent Dilfer, but that is what would be ideal for him, reps. Second and 10, Weldon trouble drops it off Derek Red and he loses three yards well he showed you what Tampa Bay had to do to try and win this game and getting back to what you talked about regarding Minnesota well, we talked about deny the run early that's the same thing Green Bay did they jumped all over it from the start and took them out of the game plan went on special teams that hasn't really been a factor as far as the scoring but the starting area you know that that's not so much there I think they just haven't killed themselves with the special teams. And, and uh, Fouad Reves, he did hit earlier, or hit later, he missed it too earlier, so. Third and 13. Weldon. Rock. By Martin Harrison. Harrison has sacks in each of the last three games. The seventh sack today by the Minnesota defense. Harrison, the free agent from San Francisco, came over last year. Number 91, he's on the top of the screen. He's fighting, fighting, and that's got to be coverage down the field. You see Weldon getting out of the pocket soon. He doesn't have any place to go. But remember, you got to remember that Harrison used to be a linebacker. Came into the league as a linebacker, so he's got that outside quickness. Reggie Roby hunts it away to David Palmer. Number 29. Brings it out to the 38. And Brady on the stop after a 50-yard punt. 4.40 to go and everything going Minnesota's way here at the Dome. Thirty-one seventeen, Minnesota in front. Again, coming up, game two of our doubleheader, Washington and Dallas. Today's game produced by Bill Brown, directed by Billy McCoy. Our associate producer, Ray Smoltz, the third. And our broadcast associate, Greg Scopatone, would like to thank Dick Bossing on stats and the counselor, Terry Kane, our spotter here in the booth today. 440 left. Our man Jim Allen down there, too. Can't forget about him. We were in his hometown last week of Green Bay. 
First half give is to Scotty Graham, and this is what Minnesota has done all day long. Already a season high for rushing in a game piled up by the Viking offense. Now the Minnesota Vikings, we talked about how crucial this one was coming in as well as Tampa Bay. Yeah, and you look at the other teams that have, have gotten, would have gotten the spot there up top. But the key, you know, talking to Green Bay last week, and it doesn't really apply so much because of an indoor situation, but the key for teams like Green Bay, outdoor team, is to get a playoff game, the first rounder up there. They, they, that's all they talked about. Can we get somebody like a San Francisco up there in the first round? Well, you see what Minnesota has left. Many here in the Minneapolis area figure a loss at San Francisco, hoping obviously for wins against Cleveland and Cincinnati. And for those of you wondering, since the 12-team playoff format began in 1990, teams with a 9-7 and seven record are 11-8 and eight when it comes to qualifying for the playoffs. 10-6 and six will get you in. 9-7, and a little better than 50-50. Yeah, and they changed that rule that year, the year after, and when I was playing with Green Bay, we went 10 and 6. They didn't have the new rule in. Cincinnati lost to Minnesota on this field. Had they won it, Cincinnati won, we have, would have gone to the playoffs. As a result, Minnesota went to the playoffs. The next year, they changed the rule. And the next year, we went like 7 and 9, something like that. Right. Which wasn't good enough. <laughs> Andrew Jordan limps off the field. 3.30 to go. Bad as all. And Warren Sapp had it. Lost it. John Garrick who's moved from guard to tight end, back to guard again, makes the reception. Ah, the time at tight end. Warren's trying to figure out what happened because he took a shot. But that's, a, that's an example of, of, of you know things are going bad. Now, I would have thought that Warren Sapp was going to take off running down the field because he had this ball for a while. There's one tip, two tips. Hardy comes in. Now, Warren, go. Nope, he doesn't get the ball. And Jarek comes over and makes the catch. Well, Jarek, he hit the tight end the final month of last season. In fact, changed his uniform from 66 to 46. Now he's gone back to 66 as he moves to guard again. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, guys like that, along, he's talking to uh, Keith Rowan, the offensive line coach there. But, yeah guys like him and Corey Stringer on that right side that have been the difference in the running game, I think, for, for Minnesota today. And that's a big man, 340. You can barely see his face in it. Well, for Tampa Bay, the remaining schedule, all divisional games. Green Bay then visit Chicago and finish at home against Detroit. But the loss today puts the Buccaneers 6 and 7. That's a big man. 340 pounds. He, he really shortens the corner, I'd say. That, and that's why you have those big bookends over there, because it makes a guy have to go two yards wider around the corner. Stringer left after his junior year at Ohio State. What a team, the Buckeyes. Just think about this for a minute. We've talked so much about Florida State. If all the guys that have left there had stayed until their senior season, to go with that Buckeye club that nearly went undefeated, you could have thrown in Dan Wilkinson along the defensive line and Corey Stringer to the offensive line. Warren Moon rolling out, escapes trouble. And the pass is incomplete. He had an eye on Jake Reed, broken up by Mike Magruder. I think that kind of shows you how ingrained the pass is in this offense. Without Robert Smith, without James Stewart, you know, three minutes left. It was a third down situation, but they choose to go ahead and keep the ball in the air instead of running it to run the clock out. So Minnesota with 3.09 left will punt. With the Vikings, a two touchdown lead. Bobby Joe Edmonds waits at his own 10. They're coming after it. But couldn't get there. Inside the five, batted back by Robert Griffin, but he didn't have any help. Well, 
we go over to the AF side, the playoff picture. And this includes the Miami win today over Atlanta. Kansas City now, you got to remember, can clinch with a win over Open today. And boy, without Hostetler, whether or not Hostetler goes, I think that's the key. Because they are, they are a different team without him. And even if Hostetler goes, the guy is so beat up. I mean, two years ago, he had two, three surgeries in the offseason. And he, he walks around out there like Ray Bolter sometimes. I just wonder if he can make it through the game. First down to 10. Weldon. By Martin Harrison. Well, at the end of the game, Ron and I will select the Miller Lite player of the game. Tampa Bay quarterbacks have been sacked eight times by the Minnesota defense today. <laughs> Weldon throws it away, 2.33 left. I still think it's amazing that this team can even concentrate on a week-to-week -week basis with what's going on down there in, in Tampa Bay. There's still talk about a move. There's still talk, and, and even more talk now, about a stadium change, whether or not they can get it, the, the, the seat license licensing situation, or seat chartering or whatever. Now, all that talk is just such a distraction. And Sam Weiss, I think, has done a good job of keeping these guys focused. But still, when they go home, they hear it. And all it says is instability. Catch made by Jackie Harris out to the 23. And of course, you go back to last year, Ron, they faced the exact same situation. Yeah, right. They included, of course, the death of the owner, Mr. Culverhouse. Absolutely. It's been two it's, rough years. It's one thing after another. And, you know, they make a run in the middle of the season. Dilfer comes back. He, he starts to show a little bit of spark. And then, you know, I think that has to do with it, that talk and, and not knowing for sure. And there's talk of, of a move. Like you said, there's still talk hot and heavy about the move. Well, we have reached the two-minute warning at the Metrodome in Minneapolis. The Vikings lead 31-17. This is the NFL on Fox. Well, our Miller Lite player of the game, Minnesota's Amp Lee, who got it done rushing. And receiving today. It was a tough vote. Chris <laughs> Carter, Ampley, Scotty Graham. Scotty Graham. Yeah. I was talking to Ampley before the game. He said, I, I need to, to run the ball more. And I know that that's not in the plan, especially with the other two guys out. But if they just give me a chance to run this ball, I know I can get off. He may get a chance to run it some more. Uh, his season high prior to today in rushing 44 yards all the way back in the second week. Today he's more than doubled that total so fourth down and nine for Tampa Bay and it should have been intercepted by Pete Persich the first year pro out of Notre Dame he's been replacing Ed McDaniel who left with the stinger earlier you might remember that name Persich his father Bob played safety for the Dallas Cowboys and this guy actually was recruited by by Dennis Dennis Green and at Stanford during his years out there likes that long hair he's got that, that long hair thing going on well he'll forever <laughs> be remembered in Notre Dame lore as intercepting the pass in the end zone to beat then number one Florida State in South Bend so Minnesota just to put this one on ice Brad Johnson has taken over at quarterback for Warren and Tampa Bay only has one timeout remaining. Let's send it back to Hollywood at McDonald's game break and James Brown. Uh, Miami was trailing by five with 11 seconds remaining. Dan Marino with time. Who does he find? Irving Fryer. Dan Marino's 31st fourth quarter comeback and the Dolphins win it by one. Let's take it back to Tom and Ross. Wow. You see, Atlanta, that thing is slowly slipping away and here come the 49ers. It's amazing, boy. It's amazing. Week by week, it slipped away inch by inch from the Falcons. Well, you know, Philadelphia, the only team that right now would be considered a wild card, 
is taking the Bulls by the horn, so to speak, to make sure that right. they are going to qualify for the playoffs. Right. Well, Ray Rhodes, what do you think? Coach of the year? Absolutely. <laughs> Boy. Neutral zone infraction, number 99 on the defense, causing the offensive man to move. Five-yard penalty, still second down. That's the new rule from two years ago. They used to warn the defensive player for jumping in there because what they're doing is trying to force the offside by the offensive player. But now they said, no, that is not in the sportsmanship of the game. We're going to flag you now. So all that does, once again, going along consistency with creating more offensive firepower, the new rule changes. It slows down the defensive lineman's pass rush. They're not as aggressive. They don't want to jump offside, giving the quarterback more time. Scotty Graham will break the 100-yard mark for the first time this season with that carry. Or get very close to it after losing four yards, two carries ago. Graham knocking on the door at 100. And he hasn't been there all season long. 28 yards rushing. His season high until today, two weeks ago, against New Orleans. He's two yards short of that now, the 100 mark. Well, Eric, now we asked him. Eric has those lucky uh, alligator shoes. He's got close to 50 pair of, of different kind of skin shoes, eel, ostrich, all that kind of good stuff. He said, the green ones are the good luck. I said, okay, so that's what you brought on the trip. He said, no, I brought the brown ones. They're not a good I move. didn't want to say anything, but Eric, next time, bring the green ones. Well, back-to-back -back weeks, nightmares for Eric Rett. Today, 17 carries, 47 yards. He, he had some big runs, but I think the priority has been on opposing defenses is we are going to stop that man first in the run first at all costs. Johnson hit from behind by Derek Brooks. The ball is loose, but Minnesota's recovered. Adrian Cooper, the tight end, picks it up. Derek Brooks, the rookie out of Florida State, coming on the blitz. Adrian Cooper down. On the clock, under a minute, 45 seconds to play. Cooper now getting to his feet. Big uh, win here today, though, Ron, for Minnesota. A huge win, and, it, and it's a big win in a situation where we talked about the playoff implications, okay, and, and a team that's been there before and knows the pressure versus a team that hasn't been there in a very long time, and I think that's shown up. Looking at Dwayne Washington there, and there's a group that's taken a hit. So you talk about some of those guys that were with this team in the secondary, Vincey Glenn gone to the Giants. Anthony Parker gone to the Cardinals. Todd Scott, who was with Tampa Bay right now, but inactive today, you know, he went to the Jets from here last year. Carl Lees, you know, there, there are no more of those here. It's, that's a mark of free agency. Things turn around. But they have that veteran Warren Moon. Um, lots of confusion out on the field right now with the officials, but Warren Moon. Yeah. A very solid chance to head back for yet another Pro Bowl. It would be his ninth in a row, Chris Carter. Life is good when you can take the pads off. I mean, now, he's got that throwing pull. He didn't practice all week, and he was stretching, and he walked around and watched practice. He had it wrapped around, some ice wrapped around his throwing, but you can see it right, right there. There it is. He's got that pack shoved down in there. And Warren, he's got something. He's got something on his right hand. I don't know if he took a shot there. He, He's got some ice wrapped on there. You know, Moon told us an interesting story about not having ever worked with weights before in his career. He got down in Houston and had a chance to meet then Houston Astro pitcher and legendary hurler Nolan Ryan, who's probably had the greatest right arm in the history of professional sports in terms of longevity and effectiveness. And Moon went page by page the workout weight regime used by Nolan Ryan. And here he is at 39, still throwing bullets in the NFL. So that'll be the final play of the game. Minnesota here at home behind Warren Moon and an unusually strong rushing game. Roll over Tampa Bay, 31 to 17. Tampa Bay has a, well, a change of possession, a chance to run perhaps one or two more plays. 
uh, going back to Warren and the, and the strengthening, working with Nolan Ryan, he said the big key was the weights. He does a weight routine every single day. He'll do it in pregame warm-up with some dumbbells, stretching. But the stretching was the key. If people think it's the weights and you got to lift and get strong so you can throw, it's not the stretching. It's the flexibility. And when you land in certain awkward positions, you know, your arm can, can take the hit. Your body can take the hit. And he's one of those heavy Stairmaster guys, too. So he, his whole body's in shape. Well, Eric Red, his biggest carry of the game. With the game out of reach in the final 30 seconds. Tampa Bay out of timeouts. And for the Buccaneers, another season without advancing to the playoffs. Although it's not officially over today, I don't want to leave that impression, but slipping to six and seven, it's going to be very difficult. And Rhett may get close to the 100 yard mark here just on these last two plays. Now he's up to 82 yards. <laughs> Well, if there's any consolation from the game, anything good come out of it. His yards, getting getting his yards, even if he did bring the wrong shoes. Oh, it's funny when he talks about his mom, how she doesn't really accept the fact that he can make a living playing football. She doesn't believe it. But he says, now that I'm starting to build her a house and she's going on shopping sprees, I think she's starting to believe it more. I think she is too, Eric. <laughs> Final play of the game, Eric Brett. And that is that, 31-17. Minnesota, led by 39-year-old Warren Moon. We'll be back to wrap up today's action between the Bucks and Vikings right after this word from your local Fox station. <laughs> 